Autofocus, we can autofocus. One minute. There you go. Are you ready? Yeah. <clears throat> go. All right. So, so Skinnector.com is this website that you you can go to, and pretty much it has a search box. you know, to hire a mechanical engineer or you want a partner that, you know, somebody that to start the business with you. So pretty much this website allows you to start businesses with the partners that you, you want to partner with. And when you search mechanical engineers, different mechanical engineers pop up within a 10 mile radius of your desired area or, you know, maybe it's like 50 or 100. It could be global. It just depends on how much, you know, how far you're going to go. Like PNG went all out. Uh, so yeah, and then pretty much when you press on one of them, it shows you their profile, stuff they've worked on. Maybe it's stuff that you know is compatible with things that you want to work on in the business that you're trying to start. So yeah, that's it. It's connector.com. Any questions? Questions from the audience? Questions? Anyone? Where did you get the name from? Oh, uh, it, it's a work in progress, but pretty much uh, this word means uh, to bind in Latin, like Latin root. I try to get like all smart with it. <laughs> uh, Cone is with and S is the skill. Like S stands for skill. And Cone is with. Oh. You know that by Spanish. Yeah. How do you get how are you gonna get people to to go to your website? So like for example, if I'm yeah. if I'm trying to build an application, I need a software developer, how are you gonna make sure you have people there in the platform? How do you no repeat that? I don't understand. So how are you gonna connect people? <laughs> oh, like people on the website to connect? Uh huh. Oh, pretty much they leave their information on there. So it's like, uh, but not their address because they don't want to get stuck. No, no, I know, but not, how are you going to get this going to work? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I have a little fun. How are you going to get them to sign to the website? You're going to go oh, to the okay. So, no, oh, okay. So you, you mean like initial startup? So pretty much like uh, I, I was planning to do something similar to what KP did with, uh, with the project with um, John. Uh, Mobile. Yeah. Mojo Pages. Yeah, Mojo yeah. Pages. Uh, but but for this specific project, it would pretty much be hype, 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 uh, similar to what he did. But uh, I think the the plus for for this project is that we'll, we'll, I'll start the like I'll start the website with my own with a, my own initial cost, uh, and I'll pay for like people who want to join. The first 500 people that join, uh, like getting for free or something like that. I don't know what the number is, but say like you you have that, people will want to join it quick, right? Like you know, oh, the first thousand people that join. Uh, you know, they don't pay for the website, but then uh, after that, you pay like a subscription, not not too big of a sub subscription, and then you know, so stuff like ads will be on there, I guess. So that kind of thing. Go ahead. Is it only for entrepreneurs, or could it also be for people with different skills and passions? Yeah. So 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 pretty much where I got the idea from is uh, when we we're starting a band, we had the hardest time finding a drummer. Our lead guy played drums for the longest time. We weren't getting the sound we wanted. Uh, also, like there are psychological, sociological theories that say, you know, if you go on stage and you're only three, you have more uh, self-esteem pressure and things like that. And now we we have like the fourth guy, our our drummer, and uh, we pretty much we struggled finding him. So this would be, you know, a website, a platform for musicians, anybody who's trying to connect with somebody. And okay, so basically, this website is not about you know going on the internet or being on the app. Uh, this website is actually quite the contrary. You know, this website is about finding the person and then going and meeting them, and you know, going out and you know, breaking and making connections with these individuals. Because that's a, you know, that's a big one of the biggest things that we learn. Is, you know, you can't break and make connections with the same people always. I feel like, so that's that's one of the things if you're trying to start new projects and you don't have the skill sets. Any any other questions? No. And you did a great job. I think I think it's a very interesting idea, and it. Uh, yeah. It's a really interesting extension, um, taking the challenges that we found in class and the things that we talked about and actually doing something with it, yeah. right? And it could actually become a platform instead of just being a group that 
figures out an idea and does one thing, you have to be a platform that allows a lot of people to figure out things and do a bunch of different things. Yeah, and, and like a big part that connected with me was a PNG like li limited themselves, but here, you know, I don't have to stick with like, oh, man, like our lead guy sucks. Yeah, right. I can just do this. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, I mean, I can do Craigslist, but I feel like not a lot of people use Craigslist because like there are like funky ads on there. I'll, so. I'll tell you, I mean, nobody like if anybody. Yeah. So the people that use Craigslist are the people that don't know anybody on LinkedIn. Right? <laughs> That's the people on Craigslist. Seriously, it's just a different level of talent. And when you get to the part where you're like, hey, I'm gonna go scout talent for my for my startup, do you really want to go pull people out of Craigslist? Or, or would, would you want to be able to go check somebody out on LinkedIn and see where their jobs were and see who you know that they know and see what other people <laughs> said about them and see what kind of activity and education they have? It gives you a lot more. So mm -hmm. I think it's an interesting idea. Next up. Do we um, have a... Uh, I could draw a visual if you want, but I'm going to describe it all. It's your presentation, I think. So, uh, you had a great weekend. I uh, had a lot of fun. You wake up, still a little drunk on Sunday morning, and there's one thing that's for sure you want a hot breakfast. So, you got two options. You try and find your keys, your wallet, and your dignity, hop in your car, try and find the nearest <laughs> IHOP, sit down, hope there's no noisy kids, wait for your order to come out, you know, all of that. You don't want to do that. What you do want to do is use Griddler. So it's an app, and you go in there, and you download the app, you pick exactly what kind of pancakes you want, what kind of batter, what kind of topping, what you want to mix in with it, what kind of syrup, and you know, pancakes take about two minutes to make, and then depends on how far you are from our location, that's how quick it's going to get to you. You get pancakes right to your door. All you need to do is hop out of bed, take the box, sit back down on your bed, and eat them. So the Griddler is basically a pancake delivery service uh, for all those mornings. You don't want to get out of bed and make your own breakfast. Yeah. Do you have a passion for making pancakes? I have a passion for cooking, and awesome. pancakes are fun to do. Mm -hmm. you put anything in them. Yes. What about waffles? We're <laughs> 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 expansion. I like what you're doing. for expansion. Uh, you can do. You, know, you can mix up the powder with protein for the health conscious. There's actually a way to make pancakes with it. It's two eggs and a banana. Yeah, they true. taste just like pancakes, but they're extremely healthy. So there's a lot of options, a lot of room for expansion. Uh, it's just the basic business model. Any other questions? Who would go to Griddles? Interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> Very good. You have a yeah. No. Great. There you go. Round There you go. Good do you have, uh, is there an ETA when we just start ordering? Or where's the app? Like, I'm going out tonight. If I, needed, if I needed some pancakes in the morning. Uh, uh, there's no app yet. I can make some. So, if I left the hard rock by one, and I got to your place by one, and I got to your place by one, probably. No all right, hold on, hold on, man. We're gonna get you ready, baby. This is gonna be, gonna be famous one day. This is gonna be like one of those fan videos. Remember when we found video of him in his class? There you go. Have fun. Okay. So how many of you guys here blog? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you down there. Do you make any money out of it? Do I? No. Yeah. Would you like to make some money out of it? Uh, sure. If you could. Yeah. Okay. So the suggestion that I'm proposing is a piece of software that lets you uh, tag your images with the different products that you have in them. So for an example, like say you put up today's outfit. You tag all your different clothing uh, in the picture. So when some uh, blog viewer goes in and checks your picture out, if he clicks on your shirt, for example, uh, he will come directly to the website that sells the shirt. So uh, and if that if that uh, blog viewer buys the shirt later, you'll get a commission of it for for marketing. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Any questions? <laughs> Yeah. Are you really trying to do this? What? Are you really trying to do this? Because I know someone who's trying to do that. No, not really. I'm not really pushing it. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you doing it? 
<laughs> Always say you're doing stuff. I'm doing it. Yes. He's re I'm really far along. <laughs> yes. Uh, just a comment. I think it's a, I think it's a great idea because uh, in the blogging blogosphere, uh, many many bloggers are trying to get paid, and also there's a big concern uh, because sometimes you don't know if a company is sponsoring something, and with your ID, the the company could be sponsoring uh, your clothes, for example, and it'd be transparent. So I think yeah, exactly. And what I thought is like now with the development of uh, analyzing, you can actually see that if, the if the company pays, they know that someone bought it, not they just return on the yeah, investment. Yeah, exactly, they know the return on the investment. There's a lot of affiliate programs out there where like people come to you with products, and that's what you do with them. So are you going to be like a middleman? And just One more time, sorry. <laughs> so like, there's affiliate programs that do that, yeah. where if you promote a product, they will pay you for the people who go in and end up purchasing one. You get a commission. Yeah. So it's the same model, but you're just going to be like a yeah, and we'll, we'll all of those. But I think what a lot of people do, I'm not so into blogging, but I think a lot of companies like sponsor bloggers, but they don't really know if they make something out of it because they don't analyze it and check the data. So this would be like they know what they get for what to pay. Any additional questions? Yeah. <laughs> How would you compete with like this? Because there is a thing like that for Instagram for bloggers where they click on it and it brings them to their site. Wait, there is already such a thing? Or? Kind of, for Instagram. Oh, for Instagram. Yeah. Yeah, but that wouldn't be the same thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, that's on Instagram. Yeah. It's like for all fashion bloggers, maybe that. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> maybe it needs to be a little more market research. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, right? I think so. Any other questions? All right, FYI, this is a huge huge e-com opportunity in the marketplace. Right? Uh, how many girls uh, always see something you like but you can't figure out where to buy it? Right? My wife too. And she's like, so my wife has actually been working on an app. Uh, and, uh, we, and we know a couple other people. This is a giant, giant space because there is massive demand and, and uh, you know, Nordies and everybody else is trying to be like, hey, you can get it here. right? Uh, so. Maybe you're not be thinking about that app, but maybe some of the others that really have a, some passion or interest. This is a huge, giant market. If you can connect uh, retailers with people that are trying to find out who sells stuff, you know, and, and even if one has it, all one does is prove that it's a proof of concept, right? There's always one that can do it better or got into somewhere else. So, ding, 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 this is a hot market. Yeah, but where I got the idea, I was reading about, maybe that's what you meant, like, on Instagram, like special clothing stores, they have their profiles and people going and like when they put on up some clothing or something. But people can't really uh, buy it like directly when they see it. So I think there was some some software that connected Instagram with the actual se seller. So like, 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 like to know it or something. What? Like to know it. So oh um, yeah. yeah. Oh okay. Yeah. But is it still Instagram or is it it's another app? Instagram. So if you like the picture, they will send an email with this description oh, okay, of cool. the outfit, and you just like on one of the outs and it takes you directly to the side. Oh, okay, cool, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Next up. Come on. Next up. <laughs> oh, right. Uh, sure, we pop that in front. Oh, sorry. Yeah, right. Brett. Okay, so what do you want? Do you want to plug out that one? Yes. And then you can probably want to see that monitor. There you go. You can see, so you just try to use the and should get you right in where you need to I think it's on you. Let's check. You on the But that'll be good. There you go. There you go. And then you need to from Thank <laughs> you. 
Alright, let's go. Next up. There you go. Can I just click right to go for the next one? Sure. Yeah, right. Sure to work. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Alright. So how many of you guys are guilty of not hanging up your towels after you get out of your shower? <laughs> That's it? Wow, okay. Um, well, me and my friends at Google, we came up with a product for you guys. <laughs> We're going to call it the dry rack. Uh, basically, serves multiple purposes. Uh, you just hang your towel on there. You'll have an activated button on the side to start drying it. Uh, and then there's also a second uh, advantage. It uses a UV light to disinfect your towel, so it takes away that mildewy smell that some of us have, unfortunately, after a shower. Um, <laughs> What is this needed for? Uh, solve the problem of smelly towels. Uh, you can reuse it more, obviously. And then you save money because you don't have to do laundry as much because your towel is fresh. Uh, so say goodbye to bad smells and hello to freshness. There you go. That's a little song and dance. There you go. Very nice. Oh, wait, 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 you're not going to be that, that easy. Me and my friends at Google. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? It's in the works. He's right here. It's in the works. How does get powered? you plug it in? Um, that's still in the works, but yeah, it's like, it looks lightweight. Uh, just put it in the wall and it just should be, I don't know. We'll figure it out. <laughs> he just thought, is it usually the same, like, the same thing that, like, disinfects? Because I, cause I know they have like that. Yeah, the UV light disinfection. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, that's a that's a cool idea, man. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> who would buy one of those? Yes. Right. And if your if your parents bought one, who would you who would take it in their dorm with them? Really? Right, because you wouldn't even have to buy. You just you would, but you would actually use it. Yeah. Right. If you remember to pick up your towel, put it on the thing. <laughs> right. Very nice job. You have your paper? Yeah. Right. There you go. Round of applause. There you go. Hello. Hello. Next up. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh -huh. All right, so I'm assistant. So this is Tuesday morning. Hey, what's up, John? What are you doing? Yeah, no, I'm off today, dude. I want to go up to San Clemente and get some surfing. You want to come with me? Oh, shoot. Okay, that's cool. Dang it. Can't find nobody to go surfing right now. It's Tuesday, 10 in the morning. Waves are cracking. I can't go and meet up and invite people to go because meet up, they only have their own meetings and you can't choose like what activities you want to do. Can't go on Tinder because that's the dating <laughs> app. And people think I'm weird, especially if I start to like tag guys and match guys to go surfing with me. Uh, I heard about this new app. It's called like integration. And I think you can just like upload your interests online. And it will match up with people in your area, like the same way Tina does, but it doesn't have that dating like feel to it. So you can just be cool and go surfing with your friends. Let's see if it works. Cool, that's three people wanted to go surf in the area. Let me try to integrate with them. Cool. Yes, 10 minutes. Yeah, it's right here. <laughs> <laughs> so my idea is just to create like to create an application where you can meet up with you can find people that have your same interests in your area. You choose by geolocation would have a GPS, so you choose the area you, you're willing to go to if you want to drive somewhere. Uh, it will I think will mix a concept that Meetup and Tinder have because last class I was told that Meetup does the same thing, but it actually does not because they only they tell you. That are they, they they're doing an event, but you have to join their event. You can't choose. So if they're doing a meetup in your neighborhood to go, let's say, like to do a cooking class at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, you can either attend to it or not. And my app will just give everybody a chance to meet whoever you want that has the same interest, so you can go have some fun and do what you like. The end. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Questions. Questions. I'm sure there's questions. Oh. <laughs> How did you come up with the idea? 
one day, same thing here. Like I was just like bored out of my mind. I couldn't find like anybody to go. Like I actually wanted to go surfing. I couldn't find anybody to go with me. All my friends were either working or in school. Dude, didn't call me. Dude, that's my world. And uh, another thing too, and I started thinking about it, and I called a friend of mine, and I was telling him about the idea, and he just happened that he was gonna move away. He moved away for a job, uh, for a new job that he had, and at that new place, he didn't know anybody. So it was just like hard for him. He was working out of his house, so he didn't have like coworkers or anything. So until like he was able to meet people, it was really hard for him to find people with the same interest to go do stuff. So and that doesn't limit you to sports or anything. You can go cooking, you can go watch the sunset, you can go for a hike, you can go do whatever you actually want to. You can go, I don't know, swim together or like whatever, you know what I mean? <laughs> so that's where I got the idea from. Any other questions? Who would use this? There you go, as your market research. All right, nice job, nice job. Next up. All right, is this working? All right. Oh, everything works. <laughs> Let's go, press the right, press the shiny button. Uh, let's see, doc cam. Doc cam. And then you can zoom that guy out. Zoom out. Zoom on doc a little bit more, a little less. All right, I'm Brad. I'm uh, presenting FlexTrack, and uh, FlexTrack's the ultimate muscle activity tracker. Um, FlexTrack is redefining fitness by providing real-time measures of muscle strength and fatigues. Um, it measures these uh, fatigues and strengths through uh, the EMG or electromyography technologies, which is uh, it allows you to self-monitor your own workout uh, without the cost or pressure of having a personal trainer sitting there watching you. Um, it gives users an exact measure of when to push themselves uh, harder or decrease their, the intensity of the workout uh, based on those levels of muscle activity. And it uh, ultimately works to eliminate injury uh, by tracking this and uh, it pretty much maximizes your strength um, and eliminates injury during uh, while working out. So that's pretty much it. Any questions? Uh, right, right. Well, yes. Questions from the audience. How, how does it measure everything? Um, I'll, I'll have to look it up again. But it, it uses uh, oxygen levels. Um, you don't need to put more fat in Yeah. So that, what, I, what's um, I forgot to mention here is that if you would use like compression shorts, or, like a sleeve, okay. and it has this device on it that measures uh, the activity, kind of like how something like Fitbit or Nike Field Band measures uh, oh, cool. sleep. And oh, so stuff. the EMG exists, right? Yes. So, so yeah, how they, use, you, they yeah. use it in uh, the medical field. Yeah, how, how, oh, so it's only in the medical field and you're trying to- bring Right now, yeah, I'm trying to trying to make it more mainstream so people can regularly yeah. use this to work out. It's, That'd be a cool yeah. Do professional teams already use it? Uh, professional teams that no one uses this right now. Um, actually, I got these pictures actually from a, a potential competitor that hasn't hit the market yet. Um, but no one uses it. But I, I got the idea initially because I've seen quite a people get uh, injured working out and stuff and training, and uh, they can't use their talents on the field because they're hurt and stuff. So if you if you train properly, um, decrease injury, you can get out there on the field and stuff. And also pitchers and stuff in the majors now are. Everyone's tracking their pitch count and everything. And it'd be as easy as putting one, one of these on your arm during a game, and it could tell you real time how he, his body actually feels instead of going, okay, he's got 105 pitches right now. Maybe he can go another inning, you know? But you actually have the real time data that says, like, where his meter's at, right? Based on historical yeah. stuff, on performance levels, and the more you turn, to turn it up, and there's predictive analysis on the performance of an athlete. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's mildly brilliant. Other questions? Uh, yeah, I think I think it's it's great. And if you could um, integrate it with the Apple Watch, for example, which is very much oriented into into sports, because you can just have a, a pretty cheap strap uh, that you put on your body, and then the watch will give you all detail right. uh, analysis. Right. Okay. What are you actually measuring as far as muscle activity? Um, it's it has to do with uh, like it has like beats per minute in here, and it has a few different things that calculate. Kind of it'll, it'll give you a number so you'll have that in, in like a kind of a program with it that tells you exactly how it calculates it and what um, numbers and it also show like red or green or yellow to pay, uh, depending on where your muscle's at yeah 
I'm sorry. It's like the percentage at the end. Of the yeah. Yeah. It's like a level of fatigue, right? So. Yeah, a level yeah, of fatigue. Or, so if it's too low, you can push yourself harder. Too high, you want to let off. Okay. Right. And then you could do stuff. You could do synchronous and asynchronous stuff, right? So you could send somebody to the gym, go get your workout in, and, and they come back to, oh, yeah, I had a great workout. And then you could pull the data and, like, bullshit, you were slacking. <laughs> right. right? <laughs> So there's a lot of different types of things. So uh, very good idea. Cool. Thank you. Right? Who would uh, who who sees a, a place in the market for this? <coughs> there you go. It's your focus group. Oh, I'm gonna get to you now. I, I didn't change it on my mobile. Okay, so can you go? Yeah, sure. Next up. <laughs> oh, don't all rush up there. <laughs> Uh, so I'll uh, pop it over in this, uh, in this beat, and then I'll give you the monitor and you can use the mouse and get in your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you're gonna. Oh, I'm sorry, I have to get to the. It's right here. This is just tells you your input. So PC, get you right to where you can give us some of that. PC, this is the PC. PC, it's just not. Yeah, it be. Oh yeah, it's on there, but it's supposed to be on here as well. Can you turn? Uh, I'm trying to try it backwards. Uh, the, uh, right down here, you can get out of your way before you start. Uh, there you go. Oh, that's, uh, it's here too. Oh, you got came back on. I think we had at least cable from me jacking it around. All right. All right. All right, so it's the Camp Pack 5000. <laughs> Basically, it's an all one Camp uh, Camp Pack. I think if anyone was here, I explained it last time. Uh, but I had a couple more innovations to it. So it's a regular backpack for camping, um, and also has a fold-out tent which stays in the back in the back panel. Um, it also has a nice fishing rod that you can use for it and a camel pack. We're calling it a liquid pack because I'm pretty sure camel pack is patent, so I don't think we could use that. Also has an overhead tent that will be keep you from shade in those hot days. And yes, why 5,000? Five functions, thousands of opportunities. <laughs> all right. All right, all this. So the aha moment, I came with the idea because it gives the opportunity to market because there's no other all-in-one camp packs. Um, it would be more comfortable, also give you a little more room to carry more things. Um, you have all these all these things also attached to it. It gives you less of an opportunity to lose it. Um, so you were camping, and so you left your tent behind. It's impossible to do that because it's literally attached to your backpack, so you have to leave the entire thing behind. Um, and, yeah, there's no other all-in-one backpack, so that's about it. Any questions? Who would buy one of these? Excellent. Questions? No questions? Real? Come on. How heavy is it? Oh, well, I mean, those like those big camper backpacks are already extremely heavy once they're full to begin with. So I don't feel like that's going to really affect because it just has the same amount of things that you normally would have in it. Just mostly that it's already like integrated and attached to it. I know a lot of people that will go camping with a camel pack. They literally wear the camel pack on the inside, the mm -hmm. big pack on the outside. So with this, you could literally just slip in your camel pack into this like uh, insulated pocket that you could have like a you know. Keep it cool, a little cooler too. So I mean, it kind of just adjusts for the level of comfortability. Oh, there was this guy that uh, made this. Well, it's not the same idea, but I, I don't know what uh, your focus is, but maybe I can forward this to you. Pretty much, he made like a like a tent, but it has it has like a like really cool functions, like as uh, solar panels and everything. And you can't tell it even yeah. has solar panels and. Uh, I think it, it has like wa a water system, mm -hmm. so you could take a shower with inside the tent, and it's for like the Syrian uh, like crisis, what's going on in the Middle East and all. So that's it's like a humanitarian thing. Yeah, this is, yeah, yeah, yeah that's, a, that's really cool. But this is more like for like you going camping, like you're going like to the mountains for three days or whatever, and you go oh, like okay. hardcore camping, like not just you know driving up your car to a certain spot and just parking your car and moving to a campsite. It's kind of like more like the traveling, hiking to different places all around. 
and being able to just have all that you have on your back, and that's kind of the idea with the focus market that we be those type of people. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Nice job. Where should I? Yeah, I'll just bring it. Even though it's PC one at a time. You got a whole copy? Yeah. I could email you the PowerPoint if you want to do that. It's a little, I changed it a little bit from the last week, but I would decide a few things. Good job. Would you like to go next, Nick? Yes. All right. So it all started um, last November, and I was uh, I was actually buying shoes for my girlfriend because when you have a girlfriend, that's what you do. <laughs> and then so it doesn't change when you get married. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. So I bought shoes for forty dollars, but what I didn't know is that instead of just buying shoes, I was buying a subscription service for shoes, and every month for the next four months they charge my bank account for forty dollars without receiving any other shoes. So that so I realized that just fab was just bad. <laughs> and so as I was trying to find a way to uh, I was trying to find a way to contact the customer service so that I could get a refund. But then they told me um, that they don't do refunds, which I thought was kind of weird. And so I actually found a way to, f to find the email address of the CEO of JustFab and send him an email to say how pissed off I was. And then for, uh, 24 hours later, I got my refund. But um, so I was, so the problem is that when you buy online and you buy from online businesses, you never know if it's a scam or what's going to happen. So there is, a, um, there is something called the Better Business Bureau that ranks online businesses and other kind of businesses to see if they're trustworthy. And the problem is that you just have to pay $400 every year to get your A plus rating and that's it, no, no, nothing else happened. So what I'm introducing is a better, better business bureau, which would be like um, the best customer service platform for businesses and where you could, you could prove as a business that you care uh, about your customers, you can, you can respond to customer complaints and, and show that you're trustworthy and, and that you're a good business. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, um, so, so how does it work? So the way it works is that uh, as a business you sign up and then you can create your profile uh, which which can be pretty advanced. You can have your you can you can have all kinds of different stuff. You can put your refund policy and then the thing the way it works is that for example some businesses like to use Twitter to respond to customer service inquiries. And um, so we'll we'll have different badges on the website they, that businesses can earn if they have a good customer uh, service and that they uh, they reply to their customers on Twitter and they yeah and so businesses can earn badges and there will be a way for them to to engage with their customers and so if you have a complaint you go on the website you put your complaint and if the businesses doesn't reply then your 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 uh, complaint will be visible to everybody else so that encourages the businesses to to care about you. So how's that different than Yelp? Yeah. Oh, the, the problem with Yelp is that it's for local businesses, and this is for this is targeted for online businesses and and not local businesses. Because usually, when you go to when you go to Subway, for example, you don't have you don't ask for a refund. So so it's it's kind of different in that way, and it's very much targeted to customer service, um, which is which is different from Yelp. Other questions? All right. Thank you so much. Uh, where is it? I think it's I think it's closed. All right. Anyway. Oh, there's sound on here.
this time. Oh, oh, on the volume button. Yeah. Yeah. So you can manage that. Okay. All right. So um, I am actually in working in currently in a manager in that food business. And I deal with situations where it goes from like sexual harassment to uh, stealing and even like dealing with passive aggressive people. There are times where I'm not allowed to fire somebody on the spot, or there are times where I can't handle situations unless I consult my human resource manager. Most of the time, my human resource manager is rarely get back to me just because she's one person that manages the whole region in California. So it's very hard to reach her. So I um, thought about this idea of uh, presenting an application that kind of has a database from A to Z in different situations and how you can approach it. And this even goes for personal life too, how to handle like violent people, how to do this, how to do that, even when you get in a car accident and what forms you need to fill out. So I thought about an application that would have that and it has a, you know, a, a human resource text that are certified to be able to give you advice as well. So um, it's called Human Resource for You, and then I'm going to play you my first uh, commercial that I launched for this. What do I do if a coworker is touching my butt? What should I do when my boss keeps touching me inappropriately? You're very good looking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, aside from like it. Okay, what do I do? <laughs> there, you go. there you go. Any questions? Oh, you gotta have questions. Um, it's like I said, it would be a uh, human resource. I would, you know, there would be a human resource text that would be able to provide the answers and they'll fill out the database. Yeah. So would every company have to integrate their this system into their company and, and personalize their, their yeah, responses? It, yeah, I would like to, uh, it depends on this disclaimer, so some companies would not even dis disclose the HR policy, but most human resource policies are across the board. They're consistent, especially in determining the states too. So usually they should abide by the same Guidelines. How will you get the employees to download your app? Would you like the company force the employers to download it to their cell phone? Uh, I would import. I mean, like I said, it depends on the organization. If the organization supports it, then yeah, I'll create like some kind of deal with them. But it's for everybody, so it doesn't have to be for one more. How mm -hmm. would you make money with it? Uh, like I said, it's charged app, so like you know, it'd be, okay. and then if they ever want like more personal assistance, they would have you know, they can pay monthly for a personal HR tech to be with. Hit, you know, they get more one on one time. All right, thank you. Did you get your paper? So, right. Okay. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would hate for you to go out <laughs> I'm awesome, thank you. Oh, oh right, you want to have it? No, I'll just make you go backwards. Okay, we want to go. Okay, everybody don't look at her password. You can't see it anyways. <laughs> All right, we, what's going on? Little events like Trivia Tuesday, and it's like Disney trivia. And then in the speakeasy, they have uh, Disney themed cocktails, and it's like it's, it'll be located in Burbank, which is where the animation studios are. And it's a place where like the workers can just like go grab lunch or go grab drinks after work and let their creative minds like keep flowing after work. And that's it. Question. 
questions? Oh, so many questions. Someone. Come on, Nick. Start us up. How do you get the rights from Disney to use their image? And <laughs> <laughs> I just thought of this for this class, so I didn't do much in-depth thinking. <laughs> yeah, that's my question. Next. Which is this basically just like the Forrest Gump, but just like the Forrest Gump place. So it's like a chain. Like Bubba Gump? Yeah, Bubba Gump. Yeah, and then the speakeasy attached, okay. which is like the secret bar. Type of. Um, it comes from the Prohibition area, yeah. era. So it's like a bar with like so like the princesses could go like hang out at the bar and the rest of like the Disney. I mean anyone and, can, yeah. Right. I just like imagine like the people in costume being in this bar. Yeah. Huh? All right, thank you. Thank you. Next up. <laughs> I can only rip this, but I also can do a couple of stuff. Sorry. Okay, uh, no. All right, everybody. So, you, have you ever had uh, received an urgent phone call telling you that a loved one's been rushed to the hospital before? Fear takes over, panic sets in, questions arise, waiting ensues. Why not simplify a stressful situation with an app called Follow My Health Plus? So, what is this app? It's a portal providing anytime, anywhere access to health-related information about you or a loved one. Um, it enables you to take a proactive role in managing you or a loved one's care. And the app can be linked with any healthcare organization or physician using the software. Uh, the basic functions of the app are going to be reviewing medical records, the ability to directly communicate with the physicians. Uh, you can view your lab and test results. You can request re, uh, prescription refills, schedule and change appointments, sign off on paperwork, and submit forms prior to any appointments. The special features of the app are family and friend login permissions, a reliable medical search engine, a patient locator, and a live camera feed for patients who are in the hospital, and also parking updates. Um, so this app is effective because it puts the user first. There may be other similar apps, but not as user-friendly as this one. Um, it's helpful and informative tool in times of distress. It aims to make stressful situations easier to manage and organize, and it's a reliable source of communication for patients who are incapable of relaying information about themselves. Very good. Very nice. Good. Questions? Yes, you would have to give permission for the users to log in under your account. But I came up with the idea because my mom got really sick a couple of weeks ago and it was just chaos for my whole family. So it would have been something nice to have to be able to communicate because I work full time and go to school full time. So I can't always be there with her and it would be nice to be able to have updates about stuff like that. Yeah. I think it's genius. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. So any other questions? How many people wish they had this app for their family? There you go. There you go. Very nice. Nope. 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 I'm surprised you didn't go up with me. I'll get you this monitor and you can see what's going on. Yeah. Okay. He actually never buy the shoes for me because I was the one buying and I was the one who who got scammed. <laughs> so I just made up the story. Story <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. sure. Is it like this? Mm -hmm. huh? <laughs> you okay? Yes. <laughs> okay. I think it's good. Okay. okay, so let me introduce you to the scrapbooker. I know that nobody here does scrapbooking, so that's fine. But it does represent a $3 billion industry in the US, so it does have some potential. 
So I love scrapbooking because I love cherishing memories and keeping my photos in a beautiful book. But it is a bother to buy items and accessories and different materials for my scrapbook if you want to do it beautiful. So I came up with a subscription service, uh, which offers three different plans, $15 per month, $25 per month, and $35 per month. And regarding the number of items you would need, you choose your plan, and uh, every month you receive a surprise, and uh, you discover which items you've got for the month. So yeah, that's it. All right. <laughs> Questions? Oh, please. What would the items be? Well, it could be pens. It could be uh, tapes. It could be uh, um, Polaroids. It could be. Uh, so many different things, confettis. Can they choose, or you would just be like, no, it's a surprise. surprise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? So, what's, what's scrapbooking exactly? <laughs> so, scrapbooking <laughs> is like you keep a small book or a book, and you you paste your pictures in there, you, dis you decorate, you write short stories, or just a little line to remember when you want to take Ticket the picture. Ticket stuff, locks of hair, fingers, like whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What if Luke got you to any of these things in the Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Any other questions? Uh, yeah. What's up with uh, scrapbooking when you put more uh, like Instagram and like online? Photo uh, sharing. Yeah, they still a market for that, or in the upcoming years, upcoming generations. Well, uh, I know that um, there are a lot of options online where you can just create your own online scrapbook, but it's still very nice, I think, to have the the Isn't touch it? and mm -hmm. you know, yeah. turn the pages and everything. It's different. Very mm -hmm. insightful question. Thank you. Thanks. All right, great job. Thank you. Great. I, I, I just want to say side note, did anybody ever see the, the guy who made a business uh, that he, like for a small amount of money, you could send somebody like an envelope full of confetti that was going to get everywhere? Yeah. 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 Can you talk about that in this class? Yeah. Yeah. So, so that, I don't know what the final number was, but when you talk about surprise, right, I'm thinking, oh, the confetti. And I, I, and I knew the guy was auctioning off his business, right? He, like, he built it for five days. And this little supply chain, he was going to opt up. And the last bid I saw for it was like $72,000. Yeah, I saw some Yeah. Everywhere. Everywhere. Shout out fingers. Um, so, what do you need to present? Anything? No. All right, just I'll the projector off. Thank you. Less distraction. It goes that way. And I'll give you. May I have this? You may have that. Thank you so much. And uh, please. Sweet. There you go. You're on. So, um, how many of us here like to go to the salon and get our head washed and shampooed? <laughs> yeah. Sweet. How many of us here hate the damn things that they have in every salon? So, my idea basically is to create a better sink or wash bowl or whatever you want to call it. Um, at first, I thought a rubber material that's kind of moldable would be really cool, but then. I thought I do have a Tempur-Pedic bed and it's actually amazing. So I thought, what about a Tempur-Pedic material that was water resistant that would basically cover the whole entire front of the bowl where your neck and your, um, basically where you lay down. And so, yeah, that's basically my idea. I really do think that there's a market for this just because the bowls freaking suck. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah. Any questions? Questions? I have a problem. Thanks. Okay, that was a comment, but that's okay. <laughs> Questions? <laughs> Questions? Comments are good. Yeah, yeah right? I, would, I mean, it's a great idea, but I feel like it's kind of like difficult. So how are you going to get the people that already have those washables? I guess you just have to wait for them to break or wear out because I honestly, you have just like an attachment onto it. No, it would just be a, a, a whole what complete new bowl. I honestly think salons would invest in something like this, even okay. though they have bowls already, just because okay. it's more comfortable. Yeah. yeah. Um, have you found any materials that are like what you're saying that are just locked in water Um, no, I haven't. But I figured if it was like a Tempur-Pedic foam that had um, a cover over it that was water resistant, that maybe you can change out every six months or something like that. Yeah. From there and then like kind of what you're saying, I think people, I think someone would buy it. Yeah. 
like you said, big stuff. But um, yeah. if you weren't in a physical role, what if you did like a sleeve or something? Like that? Well, that already exists. That's the problem. Like they have like little cushions that you can put over like where your neck goes, but it's not comfortable still. So it's like the whole front of the bowl needs to be completely redone. Yeah. So, so do I need to buy another chair, or can I can I just change the? Bowl? No, it's just the bowl. So okay, it wouldn't so, be the chair. So be Although a new chair would be different. awesome too. But. So it, you'd be compatible with different, different. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it would be like a normal sink. It would just the front of it would be different. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions, comments? Back to my hair wants to know about when you got prototyped. So I told him about it, and he thinks that there's potential for it. Okay, yeah. awesome. He's a guy, right? Like he knows like people and stuff. Yeah, so anyway. I need to meet that guy. All right. Exactly. Next up. All right, first one up there goes. Run, run. <laughs> Please go ahead. Okay. So um, in 2017, the health and wellness industry is going to reach a trillion dollars. Everybody wants to get healthy, but a lot of people are just way too lazy to do it, to be completely honest. Um, you have things like Pinterest and other online sites that give you workout plans, meal plans, all that kind of stuff. But unless you're extremely dedicated, there's a lot of times where people will follow it for a week or two and that's it. They won't continue to do it. So basically, my product is a web-based, also app-based product. Um, you're going to subscribe and then you're going to fill out a survey with any sicknesses, illnesses, um, if you have diabetes, etc. Basically like what you eat, how you work out, everything that you do based on like how you live. And then it's going to be sent to a dietitian and that dietitian will specifically send you things back and set up like meal plans, workout, all that kind of like stuff. Um, you can also get sent like vitamins to replace things that you're lacking in your system and it's all basically just personal and you're going to have like a personal nutritionist kind of on your phone or on your website okay that's basically it questions you send it to a to a person to the dietitian as a person you can have an algorithm to just analyze the data and send you what you should buy well it's going to be an app so like all the information that you fill out on that survey is going to be sent to a dietitian and then we'll have nutritionists that work for our company that can like personally, individually send you like exactly what you need to do and like what you need to eat and like put it on your account in the. Don't like, you think you could save a lot more money if you just did an algorithm that could do that for you so you didn't have to hire the dietitians? Yeah, I do, but I would like to keep it smaller so that like, say if you wanted to like have your person come in and give you like a pantry makeover or something, like you could still have that dietitian like, like work with you and like you could even go to the grocery store with them and they can like teach you how to like buy like ingredients and everything. And how, how would they make money? Like how would you pay them? Well, we would just have to pay them based on the subscription fee that, yeah, people give us. Yeah. Is the subscription the motivation to like stay with it? Yeah. <laughs> still gonna get the person motivated. Yeah, the yeah, basically. Okay. I got an idea for the app. You should be like, have, you have to alert them all the time. Mm -hmm. Really annoying until. <laughs> and that's a good idea. <laughs> a good constant notification. There's a uh, business called Med Revolution, mm -hmm. uh, and you can uh, you create a free membership, and uh, you, whatever data you put in, they act on it. So it does this with a dietitian. Uh, uh, and if you have any of like a Fitbit or anything else, yeah. you can connect it. It'll do that aggregate, and uh, and you can add um, diet, nutrition, exercise, uh, health and wellness. They work into it. So like you know, so uh, but check it out. It's a it's yeah. a very large field, and there's people that are doing all that stuff. But they're and they're doing it with the people, not the algorithms. Because all an algorithm does is it's predictive analysis based on data. It's still not the motivation that you need, the knowledge transfer. You know, you, you're never going to get the same result from a person from an algorithm. So good idea. It's good. Yeah. 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 Anything you want. Okay. I bet you need a connector to hook that up. Which I have one of these. You can put your computer down. You can do this. 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 You can do Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.
Present. Bottom, your bottom right. Click the little icon, and there you go. You'll go into presentation mode. Does that work? There you go. Your screen's up. But you get to see your notes and all the other stuff. Okay, yeah. Okay. Good to go. All right, listen up, guys. Okay, so right now, um, most of us, if not all of us, are showering with really hard tap water, um, and it's damaging our hair, drying out our skin. So my product is a shower head attachment that purifies your water and conditions your hair and skin as well. So the moisturizer basically comes from conditioning beads that I'll create, um, and it's they're made of like essential oils that are really good for your hair and skin, such as coconut oil, um, almond oil, peppermint oil, jasmine oil, etc. Um, so my main goal is to raise awareness of the harmful effects of showering with hard tap water and to help our customers achieve healthier hair and skin while saving valuable time in the shower. Questions? Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, exactly. Questions? Please? So did you say that the water would be filtered as well? Yeah, so there's going to be a purifier, like similar to like a Brita water purifier, as well as the like, conditioning beads. Cool. Other questions? How many people would buy one of these? There you go. Next step. First one up with. Go. I have some money now too. Uh, I'll get you a computer. Okay. So, I'll get to you. And uh, we'll get to see. We'll get you a it'll come up on your screen and then that mouse will control for you as soon as it wakes up PC, PC, there you go may I have your papers? thank you oh good <laughs> So, how's everything going? <laughs> Any, uh, anybody want to vote on the most brilliant idea of the night so far? Oh, that's interesting. That dryer rack's pretty good. Sorry? <laughs> <laughs> <The> dryer? <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Sell, sell, sell. Always be selling. But, dude, it's, uh, fuck. Oh, wait, I have, a, I have a question for you. Since I read your article on your 25th uh, anniversary um, that you're having, did it pass already? Or? It's this coming Tuesday. Are we invited to your party? <laughs> <laughs> if you show up at my party, you can come then. So I'm going to tell you what's going to even be. Yeah, right? So I'm crashing the Ad Federation's party because they already had some Cinco de Mayo, something, something going on. Right? Oh, it's not like, Cinco de Mayo? Yeah. Uh, so uh, it is. So find out where the Ad Federation gig is. I don't even know yet. I just like hijack these guys' events because there'll be a bunch of ad people there already. Uh, they got a bar and party set up. So I think it's like 5 30 to 8 there. And then who knows what we'll be after. But I know I will not see any of you after 8 o'clock. Uh, there's that, that fun line about school and what. So yes, <laughs> you can uh, show up and, uh, and, and celebrate. When, oh, it's been a long time we get here. I'm going to stay here. Uh, <laughs> I thought it would be a good way to network. No, it's, uh, there, will, listen, there will be. Uh, We're all graduating. Grayer is grayer. There will be a, uh, a number of advertising people and communications people and PR and whatnot at that event. Uh, there will be a, a bunch of people that uh, have worked with me over the years, so uh, we will be uh, festive and networking. I introduce you to anybody there that you wanna uh, that you wanna meet. Just give me a good reason on why you wanna meet them, and uh, I will do introductions. So, yes, you're more than welcome to. Uh, 
Thank you. Are you ready yet? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I've been ready. Great. Great. Don't be nervous because of the camera. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Please. Okay, so um, my service is something to go. Um, it's basically a catering service that's marketed towards working professional and college students. My goal is to like test it out in the San Diego State area and then maybe expand to other colleges. Basically, what we do is we deliver homemade food to um, like college students' doorsteps. I know there's companies like Order Up and Pizza Hut and stuff. Don't know they do deliveries, but how many of you uh, don't have time to actually make a you know a good healthy meal? So you go to things like Order Up and Pizza Hut, and it's not like the stuff you get from there is always healthy too. And you have to pay high delivery fees. So my goal is to cook organic and fresh food in our kitchen and have like delivery points on campus, like maybe one near Boulevard 63 and like one near each of the um, apartment complexes. And there's going to be like a mobile app where you can order what you want down from the menu. And then we have delivery people that deliver it to those points. So you just come down and get your food. And it's um, our pricing method is going to be the lowest possible cost so that um, it will be cheaper than other alternatives. And I actually use this for a project for a different class on the website that I made on. <coughs> and this is like the menu page. This is not, it's, it's not really running. I don't really make food yet. So this is like the contact us page. So if we call you later, you're really not going to bring us food? No, not yet. <laughs> no. <laughs> but that's my idea. All right. Good. 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 Questions? Not Wait, so is your establishment just the kitchen? Like you can't go there and pick it up? I mean, if. Also. If he shows up, he's really hungry. Can <laughs> you just send him away? Because if that's the case, why don't you just have like a food truck? Because we need more space to make the food. Okay. It was a big food truck. <laughs> yeah, if there is such a big food truck. <laughs> it's like, yeah. So if you want to scale the business to other cities, can, can you be like, uh, like if I want to become a, a, a Lyft driver, a Uber driver to make some extra money that supposing... I, I think that would I be a good idea to, to maybe like partner up with Lyft and Uber and... No, I mean, I mean like if I know how to cook, which is not the case, can I sign up to your <laughs> service and then uh, propose cooking for other people who are looking for a specific type of cuisine? Um, well, the goal is to have a specific type of cuisine. I mean, okay. it could be an idea to expand to, but so far, just have one kitchen and maybe like we're going to like, use customer feedback to see what kind of foods they like and like what kind of foods they missed from back home so we can like include that in our menu as well later on. Yeah? How would you keep the cost of working and put it down? Is that really expensive? I mean, make it in bulk. I just haven't really thought of it that way. <laughs> Any other questions? Any other questions? All right, thank you. <laughs> Next up. So we had an idea uh, when we were in the south side of Pittsburgh. Uh, There's a bunch of different places that had different food. And we ended up eating a lot of the same food. And there was a lot of times that we had thought about, you know, my grandmother used to make this. Or, you know, my or another grandmother made this. And, you know, so uh, my, my uh, family is uh, serving in Croatia, right? So they made... And I had stuffed cabbage, and my grandmother made like homemade chicken noodle soup, and there's like all this stuff. And you start thinking about your grand food, and you're like, oh, that's so good. And then uh, my partner, Polly, his family was Jewish, so like his grandmother made like all kind of different stuff. So, but uh, then your grandmothers ended up just like hanging out, like one of those days when they used to make food, like when all the families to get together and their kitchens were in their glories. So we thought about, yeah, this uh, uh, retired, skilled workforce that's looking around to do something. We were going to call it Bubba and Mimi's, right? And it's going to be like, I'll hire all these grandmothers and they can make food all day. But then it was going to be like, uh, instead of it just being um, like, did they bring it out? It's going to be a bunch of old refrigerators and, and like Tupperware things. Like when you go to your grandmother's house and you can go dig through and you just wave by the pound on whatever comes out of there. Yeah. Would you go to Bubba and Mimi's and get food like when you're all drunk and be like, oh, that's, 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 that's my market test. Yes. Instead of like a brick and mortar, I would do like a single, like small little refrigerator that you put a code in and open it like on corners of streets and stuff. I would so boost one of those with my guys. Like, like, I don't know. You figure it out. But like, yeah, that's, I mean. like, that's like a restaurant more. I like the idea of yeah. kind of like spread out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a scale is always the best thing with your one location, right? It's only how much you can pump through that location. But if you can figure out what scales, then you can release it. Why did you do that? Why? Because I got so much shit going on, dude. I'm trying to do one thing, and I'm distracting it up. 
would you end up like Ben Stiller and have Bill Maher just yelling at all the old ladies? No, <laughs> I, no, I was raised different, man. You can't yell at old ladies, right? That's, although I have a funny picture, but I'll show you later about it. Are you ready? Yeah. All right, my friend. What can I do to help you? Do you need anything? Yeah. And you're on. So, uh, uh, you choose your major and your job because you can make money, it's safe, but you always have a dream. Dream to be an actor, to be a comedy stand-up, to be fame. We have a service, celebrity experience. We provide fake paparazzi, crazy <laughs> <laughs> fans, uh, film shootout, music record, record, recording, and whatever you want. So, you know, just... That's a big Celebrity experience. Make your job. That was nice. Any questions? Oh, you got to have questions. There you go. All right, listen up. We're moving. We're moving. We have a fake paparazzi service to schedule for later. We can make them. Okay, I might be wrong, but I believe that uh, most people uh, would like to see the world. But the problem for at least young people is that we don't have enough money, or maybe just enough <coughs> money to maybe go to one place. <coughs> so my service, I call it Friendly Tra Travel, and it's a service business through a website, and the target young people who want to travel but don't have enough money. Uh, the concept is that four applica applicants uh, from four different countries get matched together, and then they will travel to all of those four countries. So the service is to match together, provide a travel um, travel plan and flight tickets and uh, transportation to the housing. And from the applica applicants, they are expected to provide housing for the other three people in their countries. And this way you get to see four countries um, at a lower price. And you will have someone who lives there and know where to go or how to get there. Um, and since you don't have to pay for the housing, that's usually the biggest cost, is mm -hmm. you get more out of it. And uh, hopefully you make friends so you can go back and visit later. There you go. Very nice. Questions? Yeah. Would people have like reviews so like somebody like Clark would mess up my house and I'd be like, dude, what the heck? So I'll just like <laughs> review Clark be like, nah, just like, don't. Yeah, maybe have to like sign something. Your family wouldn't want you back in your house and be like, yeah, we'll keep it quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if anybody would do that. I think that's okay. Yeah. Awesome. I just want to say I love, that, love the idea and I will use it uh, probably, but uh, the only thing is that um, there's a chance that uh, you might see like, 
So you, you yeah, like a cool. criminal background check? <laughs> yeah. You're like, yeah, so that looks really cool, and then they got stole my shit. <laughs> right? You're like, hey, let's go on the first night, right? Everybody crashes, and then like three of you wake up the next day, and all your stuff's gone. And, like questions of they try to match right people together, and of course they want to say like I'm a friend. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I mean that's always a, a challenge. Like I mean when I move together with my roommates here, like I'm an exchange student, so I'm still coming. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm More questions. Longer. More questions. Yeah. They do that with um. It's one of those couch surfing websites so like where you can just crash at someone's house. Um, it's like a Craigslist for housing internationally, and they do reviews. So like the only way you can be on the site is that you're not, you don't have a criminal background. They didn't kill anybody. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. 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 Happy folks did not kill anybody yet. <laughs> Other questions? Have you heard of EF College Breaks? No. It's like they kind of do the same thing, but it's like a big travel group and like you pick like a country and they try to like um, use the lowest affordable cost with like food, where you're going, and like a tour guide and like that takes you to like maybe places around there too. So. Yeah, I think they, they if you like to study it. abroad stuff. So. Uh, yeah, um, kind of. Like, yeah, isn't that like language? Yeah, I think it's one. Any other questions? How do you attract the people that live in a crappy area to get people to come there though? <laughs> yeah, right. That's the only thing. That's I, I your body, like right? Here so, in San Diego, it'd be pretty easy, you know, to get someone to come to San Diego from yeah. some other country. But if you live in, I don't know, some crappy state, I don't want to say one to offend somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like you don't live in that great of yeah. Like, is there any way that you could, I don't know, adjust for something like that? No. You're like, okay, so I'm a crappy place, but I have a car, <laughs> right? And my parents own a bar. <laughs> no, just, no, just, no, just, no. I just wanted to they would try to match. Like, I mean, everybody wants. Everybody is like can do this. So of course, if you live in a cracker area, you should still have the opportunity. But maybe they could try to like match together so it's not just crap area. <laughs> like, okay, you go there, but then you can go to New York. Or okay. <laughs> How many people would use this service? How many people would be afraid of who you get? <laughs> You, you adjust it. Very nice. Thank yeah. you. Next up. What you need? Anything? Uh, just the computer. I'm gonna give it right now. Sure. Uh, no worries, man. That's what it's all here for. <laughs> You're good at this game, right? There's your monitor, your keyboard, your mouse. <laughs> 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 All right, so mine is like super specific and super technical, but uh, I was hanging out with my dad at the Padres game on Sunday, and we, we kind of brainstormed this together. So this is like your traditional like breathing apparatus for a firefighter. He's been a firefighter for 30 years. And this is the monitor right here that uh, this shows how much level your oxygen has. So he's like, when you're in a smoky room you, and you can look down, you can't see that thing. The only way that you know that it's running low is it when it beeps. But he said the beeping is like when you're on empty on your gas tank, like sometimes you can get 20 miles and sometimes you get one. So I had the idea. This is like here in the newer cars, they have the heads up display on the windshield. This call this is a company called NavD. It pops up. You just put it right on your dashboard, like, like right there, and it pops up on your windshield. So I said, let's put that technology inside of the breathing apparatus right there, and you get something that comes up with like this. So I didn't know at the time when I made it that the company had already started doing this, but in this diagram here, you have your you have your oxygen levels here, you got your temperature of the building and the rooms, and then a possible escape route. So I mean, that was I went for the more problem-solving solution than 
novel or useful, but that's pretty cool. Yeah, and then going on it further, this is it was a cool little video. Like he touched his finger and like a, a video screen popped up and he's talking to the guy next to him. You can see all his vital signs and stuff. So I I was going for safety and comfort in that one. Yeah. Questions? He well, the the limitations are the cost. If if the technology is first, they don't have the technology to actually do that. And then the cost, it would be way more expensive, and none of the fire departments would ever buy it. But if they ever lowered the cost and figure out how to do it, I think something it'd be something that they would all do. It's like Iron Man, man. It's just like you can yeah. have, like the Iron Man display, right? You know, that's how you see all that kind of stuff already. Well, he f like two years ago, he fell through a roof three stories all the way to the bottom. So if he had something on his hand, it could be like, oh shit, I'm stuck. Yeah, He'd right. Help me out. So that yeah. was cool. Okay. Other questions? I saw it from my hands up. I was thinking, besides firefighters, are like scuba divers, and it's the same. Yeah, they could apply yeah, the right. same technology. Yeah. Just anything with the breathing right. apparatus, pretty much. Are you planning on trying to like get them use it for training purposes, or just for the actual like? Uh, well, that's well. That was one of the things too. Is that it? It's tough because all the firefighters are a bunch of old stickler guys that don't like new technology. So if you could convince them that this would help in. Well, I was just gonna say because we get well, the cadets you can get the cadets to train it so that they know about the compressions in their chest, so that when they get older they can become the best. Yeah, so definitely. It start. It would. It's like the new moving towards technology and stuff. Yeah, right. Because it's almost kind of like a like a first player video game type of thing, where you know where you're in there and then you're doing your training and you're getting the data signals, right? And then they you could they could send you almost like a test flight, where they send you into a spiral. How do you, you know? Hey, all of a sudden you lost all your oxygen, or all of a sudden your temperature spikes, right? Through all these scenarios out, and what do they have to do? Oh, you mentioned es um, escape route. What is that like? Like I understand the it, it, The video was very simple, but it would be yeah. something that it's a building. So my dad's department has one specific area. It's very small with a couple stations. So you know pretty much all the buildings around there. So you already have it pretty much pre-programmed into your system, and you would say, "Hey, we're at this address. This is the schematics. This is the blueprint." Anytime, oh, you, cool. anytime you get, you have a new building, right? They have to submit a public record. If here's the infrastructure the building, so the public records will have here's maps. You could feed those diagrams and there's a limited use, uh, uh, service zone for a fireman, right? Your area is such and such. Yeah. And then once you start rolling them out, you have all this data supply, so it doesn't matter. So even if you have to go to help on the next system over, you piggyback on their data and, and you have all that stuff. So if you have the schematics, it starts just like in that Mission Impossible stuff. Hey, you go down two doors, make a or like the beginning of the Matrix, right? And they're just telling them, jump out the window now. And the, the guy who had the idea actually was a science, uh, science fiction writer. Yeah. So, yeah. I think it's I think it's a great idea and and um, I think on on 9/11 for example when the when the when firefighters were in the first tower uh, uh, the the firefighters were outside knew that the the building would, would collapse which which they didn't they didn't know inside and their radio didn't work because it was like the technology wasn't advanced enough and so that's why most of them didn't have time to get out and I think. Uh, you you talk about the price, which could be expensive, but I think the government could could really pay for that because it, it would save so many lives. I think. Yeah, a lot of applications. Very good idea. Cool. Thank you. Thanks. Find out which station Orange County. He's up in Orange County. Yeah. Next up. Nice job. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. You need anything? No. All right, guys, so I stick to my same idea of the customized brake light. Uh, basically, what it was is a brake light where the harder you step on the brake, the brighter the light appears. Um, I thought originally it might be a cool aftermarket product, but after like a few like studies, because I actually like, did some interviews and like field studies with this, people really don't like to spend that much money on their car after they already buy it because they're already paying it off. So I tried to do a licensing deal, and then the, some of the competitors would be like the the beepers when you get too close to someone in front of you, the beeps at you, or the automatic braking, braking systems. But after some more studies, like people really didn't feel that comfortable with automatic braking systems because um, on a freeway, like really wouldn't be able to detect it in time. They, they, they didn't feel comfortable with that. And um, so yeah, it would just be a licensing deal probably with like some of the mid-range dealerships like Kia or whatnot because BMW and Mercedes are on the verge of self-driving cars. So. Yeah. There you go. Question? 
is there any law that pertains to like what legalized? Yeah, so like the, you'd have to get a DTF approved. It's like two hundred fifty dollars, like to get it approved by them. And like when I looked at the the specifications, it just said like uh, a red light uh, that pretty much indicates when you're applying on the brake, um, and that it has to be red, like nothing, you know, like pink or something like that. So there really wasn't that much. It's more so like materials used building it can't be hazardous. So. Yeah. I think I saw, I don't know if it was just malfunctioning or not, because I had there was somebody I was following and literally it, when he hit the hit the brakes it would it would blink and it would like faster. Yeah, so they have they have fast Do they blinking have, ones. They have, that was already out. They have blinking ones. Um, okay, yeah. so I mean I guess that would be a competitor too. I didn't I don't know if that's an aftermarket part though. It looked like because it was also on like the back. It was like an older car and so like on the back. Yeah, so I know they have the ones where you attach and you put it on the inside of the back so it'd be like in the middle through the through the rear view mirror. Um, but I mean, like I said, people don't really like to spend that much money aftermarket parts on their car in general. I mean, how much money do you spend on your cars to make it more safe? Yeah. yeah. But if you, when you're buying a car and they say, "Oh, this feature makes it safe," it's definitely is something that people think about. Nice shot. Next up. How the raise your hands. Who have you gone yet? There you go. Come on. Yeah. Uh, or do you I need your? No, I could show it. That's no, okay. Do you want me to show it on the thing? Yes. Okay. Okay. So my idea is a simple guard. It's basically a security system. I don't know if you guys are familiar with like Kiva's cars where you get close to your car and it opens it by itself. So it's basically the same thing, but for homes, apartments, offices, you can install this and you would be carrying out a key that you could, um, you don't have to take it out. You just, as, as soon as you get near your house or your apartment or your office or wherever you place it, it would open up and it's just specific to that key. Also, you can, um, in case you lose it, you have it on your phone so you can activate that. And if it is lost, you can deactivate that key because there's um, you don't want it to get lost and someone has it and be able to access or get into wherever you have it installed. Um, also, the it would notify if someone were trying to break in. It would notify you through your app that you have. So it does have an app thing. It's very user friendly. It's high tech. The whole locking system, and um, it kind of branched out from the idea that like I guess some of the times when you want to like. You have a lot of carrying stuff, and then you want to open the door. You have to oh, my keys, then try to look for it and put everything down. So this would just you know step in front and it opens up. So that's what my idea is. Right. Well, good idea. <laughs> Questions? Uh, I think yeah, you should check out on, on Kickstarter right now. The, like, the most funded project right now is, is something like this, and they're at like, ten million dollars. So it's a big market, but they have Sorry. like it's, it works. It's not a car; it's just on your on any phone, and it works via Bluetooth. I think. Thank you. So you don't have to have anything else. Okay. Thank you. Other questions? Thank you very much. <coughs> Next up. Do you know? Mm -hmm. Where is it? In my email. Once you get into your email, I'll give you do this. How's that? You get, uh, you're going to want to see the computer. I'm sure that will help all you get. Uh, it's going to be right there, PC, and then it'll come up right for you. Okay, okay. thanks. You're welcome. Uh, a lot of work today, man. Yeah. Where do I, I type? Know, I was down at 10 o'clock, I was guest lecturing at, uh, at uh, Amy Voices Advertising. I have to type over here. You have to what? Type. Where do I type? Here, right here. Oh. Little drawer slides out. There you go. There it is. <coughs> um, I was lecturing at uh, Invoices Advertising class, uh, writing and advertising. I did that from 10 to 10.50. Then I had to get up to Carl's back um, uh, to a client. So I'm a uh, part-time CMO for a telecommunications company up in Carlsbad. So this was day two of their international sales and marketing meeting, which I had to present last night and we go out to drinks and dinner with you guys. Then we ended up at VG's Donuts. And anybody ever been to VG's Donuts in Cardiff? Best donuts ever. 
Uh, and then uh, to, after I left this morning, I had to go do a two-hour social media workshop, which uh, I had to teach uh, old people how to use LinkedIn. Which is kind of interesting, especially ah, this uh, social media stuff. I'm I'm anti social media. Right? Wrong answer. Um, so uh, that's what I do. So that ran along because old people have more it's questions than young people, and then that's why I was There you go. And I filled in enough time to keep it interesting. You ready for the questions? Yeah, he did a good job. I am on. Uh, so I'm in, man. Uh, where? Oh. Okay. So show of hands, who hates moving and thinks it's a pain in the ass? Yeah, it's the worst. That's the face that I actually make when I have to move. Um, <laughs> so my sir <laughs> Okay, racist. Um, so my idea, it's called Carry Me Home Moving Service. Um, and it gets help when you need moving or when you need to move, like if you don't have any friends or family that can help you or whatever. Um, I basically stole the setup kind of from like Lyft or Uber, where like if somebody needs help moving, they turn their GPS on and they show up like on the map like they do on Uber or Lyft or whatever. And then if people want to make some extra cash and help somebody move, they turn on the app at the same time, kind of like the same relationship between the driver and the passenger now. Um, and then they just agree to meet up and like you can request one person if you want to help like just help moving or you can request two people or three people if you just want to kick back and they do all the work and then somebody who like owns a truck could like potentially make more because they could actually transport your stuff for you instead of just like lifting it and carrying it and then it would be the same where your uh like your debit card or your credit card is attached to it so then in the end you just pay and with like a click of a button and you can leave a tip or whatever you want to do um, advertising, I think, would be good uh, word of mouth in social media just because I think it's a pretty unique service. And I don't think you really have to invest a lot in advertising because um, word's going to catch on. And I figured the best market for this would be like around the beach communities because people are kind of transitional between like PB, Mission Beach, OB. People are moving in and out all the time, especially young people. So, like, age 18 to 35, I thought would be a good target market, but really, like, anyone can use the service. So, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Questions? Bellhops. What? There's a service called Bellhops that does that right now in San Diego. No, I didn't know that. Sorry to yeah, <laughs> be first your bubble. But, That's okay. Um, awesome. Yeah, they hire college kids and they'll send out texts about when people need to get to move stuff. And oh. Kids who are available will go to the site and move. I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, good thing I was just, planning on investing in this anyway. Go back one slide. Go back one slide. To your uh, screen. I don't know how. Oh, oh okay. yeah. There you go. Okay. Yeah, that one. Right. So when you uh, repurpose is the word. You don't steal. You're repurposing something. Right. It's a two dollar word. So um, I I love the ex screenshots, right? Because when you're trying to tell somebody about an app. You can tell somebody about an app, or you can show somebody about an app. Which one works better? Show, show. show somebody. So take these screenshots and do this. But a simple Photoshop, right? You, you fill in this thing, request the whatever, you put a little name in. Those other little touches, and you just, I, I really like it. That was awesome. So this is, so it's great when you find something that's very close, that has maps, that does a lot of this simple early interface design. But that's the way that you kind of like knock it over the edge. You can't say, well, it's, just like this, no, no, make it yours. A couple little touches, and this would look like you designed everything. Mm -hmm. But nice presentation. Oh, thank you. you. This is fine. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next up, what do you need? Um, my email as a PowerPoint. That's okay. That's okay. You can just log in hers. This is already there. <laughs> Get you to your screen. I'm gonna have to separate you two. Is that what this is? Come on now. You can't even help yourself. I'm gonna put you in the back chair. Come on. Now. All right. Oh, 
was going to go get something, and then I was like, ah, you got to get a quote like, a little early. So. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, I was like, I'm going to walk to the new, because there's a new Starbucks apparently, like, on the other side of campus. I, I didn't know about it. I tried to hit up this one, man, and it was, it was like, oh, exactly, yeah. It's like even 30 people deep, man, because yeah, yeah. I haven't eaten since like 11 o'clock, right? yeah. and I've got three coffees in me. I'm coming down off all the caffeine, like, you must get something to eat, and then I'm yeah. growing late for class. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to jet into Starbucks. Yeah. So my idea is you need to have the faculty line at Starbucks. <laughs> right? That's what I want to do. The people just bust up, right? Got class, give me stuff, right? Yeah. Anyway. I need my hat. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right, you're on. Okay, so this is the briefcase bestie. So there's lots of instances where you need a printer and you don't have one. There's if you're a student and you're a procrastinator, you forget to print out your homework, and you're in class, um, or if you're in a meeting at work, if you need to sign some documents, you're moving into a new house, you need to sign the lease. Um, so this is a computer and printer in one. So the printer will be just on the bottom of the computer. Um, I know all of you guys have computers out. Um, so the bottom isn't very big on your computer right now. It wouldn't add that much to it. Um, and then you can print right from your computer. Briefcase bestie. <laughs> yeah. Questions about Betsy? How many people would buy a uh, briefcase Betsy? How many people wish, how many is going to wait for their friend to have one and use their friends all the time? <laughs> all right, questions, any questions? All right, thank you. Next up. First up wins. How many more we have to go? See, look around. Take all the time you want. That's okay. <laughs> Okay, I would have drawn my product, but I'm really bad at drawing, so you have to bear with me. Um, this kind of is more of a female product, but I'll put it in your favorite, <laughs> like jewelry. So how many girls travel and bring a lot of jewelry with them? I know I do. Uh, and how many of you get to your destination and open your bag or whatever you've packed it in and realize everything is tangled into a knot? Then you spend multiple hours trying to untangle them, you get super frustrated, and then you end up breaking your favorite necklace or something like that happens. Well, this always happens to me. I've broken numerous, numerous jewelry items just by traveling. And so I thought of an idea of, um, basically it's just a box and it has pegs and you can put your necklaces and your bracelets so they don't get tangled and then a little department too for your earrings. Um, so, and then it's secured when you shut it so it doesn't move around when you travel. And that's good. <laughs> All right, there you go. Questions? Questions? There you go. Thank you very much. I was going to say, oh. I don't know what her name is, but the, the girl from um, Shark Tank, I think she created something like one of the, the I don't know, multi millionaire, the, the lady, QVC. Oh. Yeah, maybe it's her. Yeah, she created something that's similar to that. Yeah. I don't know if it's the same idea. Maybe you know, it'll yeah. be something that you want to look at. Yeah, into. I would definitely have to look into it. And it do very much research. Next up. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. What do you need? Anything? All right. You're on. <clears throat> um, as you all know, Fitness and health is like super big in today's world, especially in California. Everyone's trying to either like get bigger, get stronger, get leaner. Um, when it comes to working out in the gym, though, a lot of people really don't know. Like we've started to see in other presentations how far to push themselves. You know, by either pushing too much weight, or pushing too less. You know, by doing the exercise correctly. Uh, I wanted to create a machine somewhere to kind of cable machines you've seen in the gym, but in this time, there's no, uh, there's no like you know sticking a thing in and seeing how much you know putting 60 pounds on, putting 100 pounds on. You actually go up, it's all electronic, you put the weight on, and then the system actually judges by how far or how fast you're pushing it with how much power to see if you're actually you know, pushing yourself to the limit or not pushing yourself to the limit, if you can push more weight, if you can push less weight. So in turn, it's giving you a good workout. And not only is this good for people who are just trying to get fit, but also people that have special needs, people that have disabilities. You could even mount one of these in your home, work out from home, and get a great workout because Doing from cables, it's really good on your muscles. It's not not a lot of pressure on your joints, and you're able to you know do a lot of great stuff and do a lot of great exercises. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yes. 
How is this different from other workout cables? So like a regular workout cable, you'd be able to like put it in. Let's say you put in like 120 pounds, I'm going to do like a shoulder press, right? And you're like, you're going, you're struggling. Our machine would be able to sense it based on like if you're not exerting enough power by pressing the cable up, it's actually going to lower the weight for you because the machine's all electronically based. Other questions? Yo, thank you. Right. Hey, yo, keep it steady, guys. I knew it's late. I knew it's late. We'll get there. What do you need? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So mine is going to be an app that kind of cuts everyone winning line because who likes to wait line? No one does, especially the fact we're all college students. So my idea came from, of course, we're all here at San Diego State now. Who has ever been to? The, um, I can't believe I just forgot the name. The pizza place down there, Woodstock's. Who's been to Woodstock's for a fundraiser? Okay. Who remembers Cream just opening up? You guys remember that? They all gave out free. The line was all the way to the bridge. Now, who has ever gotten a tattoo at EC Tattoo on Friday the 13th? Okay, I know a lot of people have got piercings and tattoos. Now, all those require great deals, but so many long lines. Now, as much as you want to go either for something free or if you want to do it for a fundraiser, all your friends want to go and it's such a long line. So what I have is what I'm going to do, start targeting an app for specific college areas, and it's going to be in that district. And what it is is going to, the businesses that um, meet up with the school organizations, no one wants to wait in line. So basically you, you sign up on there and you get your waiting list number and a time frame specifically of when to either set your appointment or to pick up your product of food or services. So that's mine. Yeah. It's kind of like what Snooze does. Like when you get there and you give your name, they'll text you when you can come in. But rather than you and your friends waiting that line, and you're like, okay, I'm going to wait an hour for my free ice cream sandwich or 45 minutes for my pizza because I want to help out, you know, this organization. What you do is you, you and your friends sign up saying, I want to go to this place is what I want, and they'll say, what time do you want to go? And then you can still, you just go at that time, so you don't have to wait in line. Do you lose your turn if you don't go at that time frame? No. You just have to wait? Well, well if you, you mean if you don't, if like you you don't go in there? you like 3 and 5, and you show up on the 7? Well, yeah. Like, that's just... You can, I or... mean, you could still technically wait in line, yeah, okay. but depending on how that line's going to be, so you don't have to wait in line. You can reschedule though, and just put you into the yeah, like let's say you schedule to be there sometime between four and five, and something comes up at three, and you can't just go on there saying, "Can I change my time?" And I'll show your availabilities that if it's available from six to seven or seven to eight, and then you send up them. Anything else? Any questions? Thank you. Thanks. Next up. Who will go next? Who will go next? Anything? So, uh, according to the USDA, five hundred dollars of wasted food. What? According to the USDA, five hundred dollars worth of food is wasted annually per household. So, let's say the average meal, homemade meal, is like five dollars. That's a hundred meals that's going in the trash. Then another hundred that the family has or the household has to rebuy. Now, this is a waste for the environment and bad for your bank account. What I want to do is find a better way to organize and track your groceries. Right now, once you buy your groceries, you put them in the fridge. Now you rely on the eye test. You open the fridge, you see what's available. But if you dig back there, I guarantee there's going to be a food that you forgot about and you want to spoil. My idea is an iPhone application that will you can take your receipt, use your iPhone or whatever smartphone, take a picture of that receipt. It will then upload all the groceries you guys bought, and then it will keep track of the expiration dates. And it will notify you when a food's about to go bad, or it would recommend uh, how to store it for proper use. And um, that's about it. Thanks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. We have interested user questions. Um, I just wanted to say yes. One, a lot of the products have expression that is on them, but the only thing that doesn't is like produce they don't. So if it keeps track of what you have and keeps track of the expiration dates. I don't know what to use all my vegetables for, and then I don't know what to use all my other stuff for that has the expiration dates. Maybe if you have it in there too, where it can generate some kind of recipes that uh, your remaining things. That was the original idea, but I wanted to focus on the minimum viable product, 
master that and then branch out into something better. Also, these use by dates are not controlled by the FDA. They're made from the store. So even if the use by date, that's one certain point, you can still eat it. It's still edible and you won't get sick. And so the uh, My Pantry app, it's called My Pantry. Uh, the application will uh, keep track of that stuff and give you accurate dates. Any other questions? I saw a bunch of hands go up. Are you actually interested in trying to do it? Yeah. I'm interested in doing it. I have a group in my other classes working on it too. And I just like the possibilities of saving people money and like lowering the waste. I think you may want to start with a like a partnership with a grocery store chain like Vons or Walmart because then you, uh, they can integrate into their receipt a, a QR code. And because if you're going to take a picture of your receipt, like the quality is like that, you have to have uh, optical character recognition. It's not going to work well, but if you have a, just a QR code, you scan it, and then it puts everything on the app. And I think I think it'd be very helpful. Yeah, because like a lot of stuff, you have to either do manual entry or I agree, yeah. like concern skin. But you know, Vons tracks like or any of these other ones, they track all that stuff on the purchase, so they already have the data. Yeah. And if what your app's going to do is help them get the most out of the food under the guise of sit, you know, save time, save money, pass the eye test. Uh, I, I think the recipes would be the add-on for that too, because what you're going to do is they're going to get the most out of the food they did. But it's the upsell on the other thing. So even if you like, and if you get them while they're checking out, then it's uh, not a oh you forgot and go get more stuff. It's a hey you bought tomatoes, you you bought you bought this. Did you ever think about making this and buy these three other things? Okay. Yeah, but if you partner with grocery stores and you buy less groceries, that's bad. That's bad. Bottom line, that's true. Mm -hmm. so I don't know how they're yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a really good idea for the grocery. I, like I know because I looked at the receipts before they're not reaching. They really make really really sense. Yeah. Really. Yeah. I think that I think that actually would make it easier for the grocery stores to partner with you because then they would know whatever you buy on a regular basis. Like you see bonds, they try to come up with their own app. They don't want you to log in and make all your purchases through that because they want to know what you buy. So they already know what you buy. That's why you get those coupons for that like that stuff. You know, like, oh my god, it's a coupon for the thing that I buy all the time. So you right now you put in your phone number, right? But it's not accurate because I use my mom's and she lives up in LA. And so like it's the way, the way they do it now is phone numbers, and it isn't accurate. There needs to be something better that goes through your smartphone application, something like on the web where it could be more specific. And then, um, yeah, I thought about uh, different ways to incorporate the grocery stores, mm -hmm. make your price lower, maybe like they can compete against like the price of bread or something, whatever you want to buy. Or your platform that you could license to them, so it doesn't matter. It's their own data source matching with their own uh, uh, data for products. Yeah. Right. So now again, you're the platform. Use their customer base and, and their data. You just the thing that allows them to connect. Yeah, exactly. I, I think it's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Here. And a lot of thing too, like a lot of people are saying that it might compete if you're getting like a kind of an end of like what like um, grocery stores might be a little bit more expensive. But I don't know about you. But I know a lot of people are really like uh, they have a lot of customer loyalty. Like I will drive further to go to Sprouts and Albertsons even if the bonds are off right now. I understand that too, and I thought of it about a way if we partner with different grocery stores, you could compare prices and figure out, okay, like I like Bonds. There's no reason I'm a Bonds guy, right? Like <laughs> I grew up going to Bonds with my mom, and that's Bonds tricked me into liking Bonds, and I go to Bonds all the time, even if Albertson sells cheaper food, and it pisses me off because I go to Bonds, even though Albertson is the same distance from my house. And there's this app again after the minimum viable product. And get some users the way you can figure it out where you can compare like the two grocery stores, and that's you could compare prices and stuff like that and make it better for the user. What's the other class that you're working on? It's uh, business plan development in Kane's class, and uh, I do this uh, presentation tomorrow too. So, <laughs> so thanks for the feedback. I hope it was good feedback for you. It was. You're, uh, you're on to uh, something good then. Thanks a lot. Okay. Appreciate it. Great job. Next up. What do you need? Anything? Not that I'm just going to. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All, All right, right, guys. I'm going to use the same idea that I pitched last time. It was a uh, recreational sports app where you use localized matchmaking via GPS on your phone to find uh, players that like the same sports around you. You can play pickup games. I just want to explain this uh, solution through a problem I had where. Uh, I was trying to play pickup games with my friends, but a lot of people were unavailable. Like mass text messaging is kind of unreliable. People weren't respond to you. 
and uh, social media, a lot of people won't respond to you even though you're just blasting it out there. And you can always go down to your local rec league, but that's a little time consuming and you have to go through the process of going down there and signing up. And so the solution was uh, that I came up with was the Ball In app, where you can just find the pickup games around you that like to play sports with you and it'll also partner with rec leagues to where uh, they use the players that you find to fund their rec leagues and then we can get a percentage for finding those players for them. Any okay. questions? Well, I appreciate accolades. Yes, well, we have questions. How many people would use this? There you go. Thank you. Next up. You can have whatever you want. Cam is going to push this button right here, and then our soon will be up. Can you show the screen? I have a connector if you want to put it on the screen. Can you? Oh, so can you zoom in? Okay, sure. Sorry. Okay, good afternoon, class. Um, so, how hot is it outside today? Is it like 86 degrees? Yeah. Uh, it feels like more than 90 degrees. Um, actually, um, my favorite uh, season is summer, but um, sometimes because of the, um, not because of that, um, the fact that I can see snow and um, and not be able to be in cold really um, makes me miss uh, winter. Uh, so. Um, and then let me ask you how many people like snow? If you can raise your hand. And then um, <laughs> raise your hand again um, if you see snow more than once a year. Not a lot of people. So, um, <laughs> so that's why I will have an indoor snow theme park where you, uh, you guys can play with snow. There are already businesses, uh, businesses like this um, in India, Dubai, and South Korea. Um, basically, um, I'm going to combine all these features and put it into, into a building. Uh, so with just with $20, you could play with uh, whatever you want inside of there. In, in there. Also, you will be able to enjoy skiing if you pay extra. There's so like in Dubai, there's actually a place you could work ski too. Um, so if you think, think that if you have a kid, um, not a lot of kids get to see snow until they maybe get um, go to elementary school maybe when they are able to go actually go with their parents to, all the way to um, Big Bear or New York or other countries um, so I can this way I can uh, inspire other people also um, to be more creative yeah. okay. there you go <laughs> uh, questions, questions about Snow City right. have you thought about somehow figure out a way to make it instead of like a year-round thing, only make it, at least for Southern California, like a couple months of the year. Just and so, just so it's make like a festive kind of thing. The only thing is because the snow is artificial snow. Um, well, you could probably do it like um, Delmar Fair, but it has to be inside of the building. It has because it's artificial snow, it's gonna melt right away. Um, so, yeah, I think it's gonna be hard, and you have to keep getting making money to be able to the building and paper. All right, any other questions about Snow City? How many people would go to Snow City? How many people would go to Snow City if they had a bar? <laughs> <laughs> right. Next up. Let's uh, get you a monitor. And then it goes uh, from the USB to your bottom right. It says PC.
So uh, I pitched this idea before. It's something that I've been uh, working on for a while. It's a music streaming service that is tailored to help independent musicians. Uh, it's called Brightside, obviously. Uh, okay, so the point of Brightside is obviously to en enable independent musicians to gain exposure. And then it's also tailored for music lovers. So any spammy music sites or sites that are kind of getting paid to post certain music, um, we don't do any of that. Um, how it works, an artist will send us a song. We approve or disapprove of the song. Um, from there, we'll post it. Um, and then after that, we kind of start a relationship where um, we work with them on other releases and marketing in general. Um, by doing that, our readers start to trust us. And when we get more readers, that just means more money from advertisements and sponsorships. Um, this is a snapshot of the website and how it looks right now. Um, so you see we have like advertisements and then on the bottom right there is the same kind of thing that SoundCloud has where it's a customized player where you build playlists and such. Um, but the biggest thing is kind of building a community around it and we've built uh, about 17 people with five different departments where um, we're working with artists and setting up campaigns and writers, that kind of stuff. Um, these are some of the people that we've worked with in the past, past just to, uh, you know, gain exposure for those artists. And uh, if you guys want to check it out, that's the link. Thanks. This is live now? Yeah. That's awesome, dude. Good job. Tip one. So how long have you been working on this? Uh, this has been kind of like a hobby slash project for like two years, but uh, I'm just now starting to turn it into a business. So. Nice. Questions? You work with SoundCloud? Uh, we don't work with SoundCloud, but all of, or not all of, but most of our music comes from there. So we'll post tracks from SoundCloud, yeah. Any questions? Now, are you be competing with Tidal, like Jay-Z's new thing? What is up with that? Um, that hasn't gotten the best reviews since it came out because it was started by musicians who are already successful. And so they were trying to say that they should be getting paid more. So I don't know. It's, a, it's kind of a different, uh, thing, because we're mainly trying to tailor for independent musicians. Very nice job. Thanks. Yeah. Cool. Next up. Give me a rough count. How many more? Looking along. Uh, good to you. Okay, so. Uh, <laughs> now let's go. I'm going to put you right over here. And then you just beat And then you can count up where and you That's right. And then just close that one. Okay. Yeah. Whenever you're ready, you have to take command of the audience. Yeah. All right, let's sip it up. So it's always stressing to to give because it's hard to find an original idea. It's time consuming and it's hard to optimize your budget. It's always either overcome or, or not reach. So the solution would be a website called Sweet Gift. And so you, you select a special event like uh, Valentine's Day or Mother's Day or new degree of someone. And then you select five items among the list of gifts that, would, that we would have carefully selected uh, based on this event. And you have a credit card, it only costs $18. And a delivery address, so we ship, uh, we deliver the gift to your address. So it's very easy, quick, affordable, and pleasing. Uh, this is you before, and this is you now. 
That's it. That's it. Very good. <laughs> Questions? I'm very interested in what you could put in the box of that size. What five things would you put in the box? Like, would you have different size boxes? Uh, yes. <laughs> All right. Okay. Great. Thank you. Next up. Can you yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's go, guys. Here's the number. Please pay attention. Thank you. All right, guys. So I'd like to introduce you to Ybuds. Ybuds will be the First patented approved wireless earphones. How would it work? It is, it'll connect wirelessly via Bluetooth to your music player or smartphone device. I thought of it because I was tired of the typical issues you get with the wired earphones, such as nodding in the cable, um, gets tangled, and then eventually it rips, causing you to buy a new pair constantly. So I thought of this as a solution, and this is uh, what it would possibly look like right here. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah, very nice personal, nice idea. Great. Okay. Right. Right. Questions? Yeah, so this is not <coughs> already? No. In case you lose it or drop it somewhere, like, can you, like, like is there a way to find it? Because like, I um, drop things all the time. You do, like, <laughs> find my phone. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't really incorporated that type of technology into it yet. But that would be a good future. Future feature we can add onto it. Probably about average. It's probably about 20 feet because I have uh, I have wireless headphones right now and it goes to about that distance. So I would think about the same kind of distance. How many people would buy these today if they were available? Nice idea. Thank you. Very good. Great idea. Next up. Yes. This is you without caffeine? <laughs> yeah, it's so like post caffeine, like before like my blood sugar drops. It's so I'm like in the blood sugar drop zone. Uh, so. Okay, who lives in a dorm or in an apartment like around campus? Only a few? Okay, well, who admits to be like kind of messy in the room, just in general? Yeah, okay. Well, I have a solution for you. Uh, my idea is called You Made It. So I would hire guys, well, young young guys and girls, um, and have them like dressed up, kind of in like a <laughs> sexy attire, um, and clean your room. It's either for guys or girls. Like let's say girls, we have a pool, and then you, we can just like be laying down and watching the cute guy cleaning our pool. You know? Or the guys, um, let's say after a frat party, like the next morning you're like hungover, you can't clean. Well, there's like a lady or a couple ladies clean for you. Um, the protection would be like, let's say pepper spray or like an escort to have them like, <laughs> to take care of them, because, you know, to be like, I don't know, like rape or, you know, all those issues. So if you are home, the cost would be $15 an hour. If you're not home, um, it would be 10. And then for every person, well, for every extra person would be $5 an hour extra. So, yeah, that's my idea. Uh, yeah, it's my idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, there you go. Anybody want to start with questions? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, very interesting service. Uh, I can't wait to see the print TV ads. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Okay. All right, thank you. You have your. Uh, oh, I emailed it. Oh, oh, good. Maybe you can find Briefcase Betsy and print me a copy. <laughs> Betsy. Betsy, sorry. Betsy. 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 <laughs> 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 
Well, at least you got that brain recall. I want to add. That's not bad. Who's up next? Let's go, guys. This thing is like wiggly. And then on that thing where it says that underneath it's a little bit to hit the PC one. Switch it over. You know you're good. I keep waiting for somebody to have like the crazy email address. Right there. <laughs> Anybody know Homer Simpson's email address? It's a trivia question. Homer Simpson's email address. I think it's chunky lover fifty seven at uh, at AOL.com. That'll come in handy at some point. Like, wait a minute, KP is chunky lover. Trivia night at Henry's book. Yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, I know the answer. Right. All right, cool. So um how many of you guys uh my name's Josh by the way, how many of you guys drive to school? Um how many of you guys just get to the parking and like boom park right away and then go to class? Yeah, that's oh uh, well, yeah, of course. Not good that, but that's what I expected. So that's why I returned to my original idea is the parking guide app. I just iterated it a little bit. I just fixed it. And my parking app is going to be available for iPhones and Androids. And my target market now is only going to be students, as opposed to before. I, I want to target hospitals, malls, and everything public that I can touch. But I realize that it's going to be a lot of issues because we got to install sensors in each parking. We got to develop uh, like a gen like the way that the parking lots are going to look like because I'm going to need visuals for you guys to look through when you guys are going through the parking spaces. And, and it, this is how it's going to work. After you download the app, you will choose a university. Like, since you're at SDSU, you're just going to click SDSU. You're going to enter your red ID, and it's going to right away give you like a 50% discount to the app if you choose to buy it. But if you don't choose to buy it, you can have a free trial, free trial for a week. And this is an example of like when you pull up to level one, and that's the display that it's going to show you on your phone. It's going to be ma majorly red. But it's going to show you that there's sparking available, so there's no point. I mean, there's a, a reason for you to go into that parking as opposed to you going in there guessing like the way you do right now and doing circles, going to the next level and going back down. So I don't know if you guys ever gone to that. And I've made a few changes. One of the changes I made was the color coding. I used to have a red, which signified it meaning the parking lots were full, and agreeing that the, there was a parking available, and a yellow one, which meant that it might be an opportunity of leaving the cars on. So I just deleted that feature because a lot of people that I was asking said that it was going to be like time wasted that they were just waiting for there for a car to leave. So they would rather have it yes or no of the parking guest there, yes or no. And then another change, as I mentioned earlier, is just narrowing my focus. I'm just going to focus on universities. And if it hits in universities, then I'll see about applying to other universities like in other states. But for now, I just want to focus on San Diego. And that's it. There you go. Yeah. Good questions. Is there any questions? You said you're going to charge for the app, right? Yeah. You should go buy it. Would you try to make a deal with the university too? Or yeah, I'm it? actually going to. I was going to do a deal with the university and include it in the web portal for you guys in the little um, student fee. Well, Just had it like a, it's, it's going to be an optional $10 charge if you want the app. But if you don't want it, then you can just pay like a 50% discount, which will be um, 20 It will end up to be $20, but it'll cost 30 what would be the benefit for the university though? Because like when you go to a mall, I know the mall is trying to get more people there, so they want easy parking. But university, yeah. they should university. Uh, I don't know. That's something that I gotta work on. It's but I'm pretty sure. Well, like, other than like saving like traffic, and I've seen accidents mm -hmm. and parking lots and people fighting. Like I've seen, I've almost gotten into a fight myself okay. with somebody like who took my parking right. Just let it go because I saw somebody pulling out by with this app. I'll just look away and be like, okay, never mind. There's a parking right here. So it will just save time, and then in addition, I will probably try to work a deal, like give the the university a cut from the app once they start making profit. And over there. Good questions. Or, yeah. Do you think it's going to cause a lot of
better because it wanted to be uh, yeah, I think that it's going to cause clutter, especially during the beginning of the week, like when it's the beginning of the first week of school, because I mean, I'm pretty sure there's only going to be one lot, which is going to be the one by the eight that's going to show green because nobody wants to walk up those stairs. So that's going to be the only one that's open. But one, one question for we're on schedule. Other than the clutter, I, I think that it'll be more helpful than having people just driving around and it'll help you guys, even though you guys might not get to see the app because it's in the making. But yeah. <laughs> And my time goes with her, um, I guess, suggestion with that. Is mm. there a way that if it's green, you click it and it shows marks like that's your spot? Well, that's going to be a feature for the people that paid with the university. You guys get to reserve the parking. Okay. And if you get there and there's a car that you just call the police and they go look for the person and they <laughs> pick them out, or they, you, got, you have to give up a spare. I'm going to work something out where you're going to have privileges. Yeah. If you pay, if you pay, if, if you decide to pay later, then you're just a regular part of the app. But if, you, but if you pay initially with the university, then you'll get privileges. And are you going to actually do something with this? Yeah, I'm actually trying to do something with this. And I got an estimate of like two hundred to three hundred thousand dollars to start an app with the features that I'm kind of like wanting to include. So it's not that expensive compared to like other things that I've thought of. Yeah, right. You should check out Zon. This is where Zon could help you work yeah. through a lot of this stuff. Right. Because Zon's already part of the university, they may get you into some places that because you're already part of the university. Okay. These two girls are developing a product for ballet parking school for students. They did okay. a lot of research. They were presenting to the Zen Center to get some some money from them. Go to the Zen, ask about them. Maybe you can partner up with them and get a lot of the the data, the research they already did. You can use okay. that to help yourself and save some money. Alrighty. Cool. Good Thank idea. you guys. Nice shot. Good idea, man. Cool, thank you. Mm -hmm. What you need here? Uh, the computer. Who would use that app? Who would pay to use that app? I'm going to download that app now. <laughs> oh, how, much, how much would you pay for that? Right? So it's what, like 10 bucks a semester? Yeah, 10 bucks a semester. You pay for it? <laughs> And maybe you can sell it with the parking permit. So it'll be like, like a dollar or two. Yeah, right. They're already there buying it. So that, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, right it's right there. Just add it to the That's it. So everybody that helps with ideas, they get one for free. Yeah, they'll be free. Everybody who's related, anybody who's in class and goes to SCC, we'll get it for free. Apps for all my friends. Are you ready? Yes. All right. Next one's up. Okay, so I changed my product from last uh, last week, last time, sorry. So I'm actually thinking of creating a bit of an industry. So um, everyone knows about the Fitbits and the different personal trackers. They were a massive nowadays, like I had one, I thought it was really cool, kept it on me, but now I kind of just leave it home. I don't know about yourself, I know, do you have it on? No, <laughs> exactly. So basically what this is, this is called Lifeix. So what it is, is you'd never leave your house without your keys and you'd never leave your house without your wallet and you'd never leave your house without your phone. Years down the track, you're never going to leave your house without your Life Inc. What this Life Inc. device does is it tracks your fitness, your steps, your energy, your fitness, your sleep. It has a health tracker to track your blood pressure, heart rate, oxygen levels, everything else. In addition, it's also a wallet. So do you guys have PayPal? I don't know what you call it, like where you just like tap it and go. So this will have that on there as well for the purchases. It'll also have capabilities to have like your loyalty card and membership information, say at like a local gym. Uh, in addition, it also will have an uh, access pass. So no longer will you need to use a password to access your computer or your phone. Your device will identify you as the owner. And then when you're in close proximity with your different devices, it will then unlock your devices um, with capabilities streaming to also housing, um, cars, all those different things. Uh, the big concept behind it is that security-wise, there's going to be a biological way to track that you are the owner of that and link you to that. So once it's removed from your wrist, neck or whatever, um, the device will completely deactivate. Um, but yeah, obviously the technology isn't isn't around right now, but one day. Yeah. <laughs> Questions, comments? So this is the like the Apple Watch, right? Yeah. Because it does like you have Apple Pay with NFC, you can unlock your BMW and if you take it off then then you remove if there there is a security enabled and you can't do that anymore. Well, uh, then plus like some additional features, so it's kind of like builds better, you know. And <laughs> even with every other product, though, but with every other product, you need to have different sets in the markets. You know, you, we don't we don't have one smartphone. We have different products. Yeah. Unlike there's a Beamer, because that's yeah. Part yeah. of the reason why I keep forgetting to um, wear my 
health checker. Yeah. I and I mean, like years and years and years down the track, they're already starting to look into the technology where it would be like a chip almost put into your skin. Something like that. Another <laughs> chip. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Quick comments. Dave? Are you afraid that uh, people might think it's a little too intrusive? Like all a little too much one and everything and they could track. Track you. <laughs> I think we're heading that way anyway, to be honest. Yeah. I feel like that's the steep the head that we're going. But um, look, I think if you look back 50 years with the telephone, people probably didn't see the purpose and couldn't comprehend why we are so attached to them and want everything in one singular device. So I think this is probably where we'll be heading. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Good idea. Uh, Paul? And next up. Good, make a difference. Awesome. Fungus. Cool. So I stuck with my idea from the last time, which is a carbon filter exhaust system for airplanes. And because it's kind of a hard idea to grasp, I brought some diagrams with me this time. So this is the jet engine. And at the very end, at the exhaust tip right here is where the attachment would go. And the, this is what it would look like. The fumes from the engine would go through the filter. The activated carbon would absorb the molecules or the particles from the fumes. And the result would be clean air. And I think, although um, John said that, they're looking into biofuel engines. I think it's a cheaper alternative. And also companies would want to invest in this because green companies uh, would bring in more customers and just as a marketing strategy all around. And that's it. Any questions? Yeah. Um, I was driving around and I saw a Contra and it's just like pollution in the air. And I was, even today when I was walking in here, I saw one just all the way across the sky. and. It's pretty normal. You just think of it as a cloud, almost like it's just a common day, but you could fix that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of pollution. Great idea. <laughs> Next up. Totally internal. What do you need? Uh, no. So my product is smart bicycle device. Um, Imagine you're riding a bicycle at night and you're got lost and in a location you're not really familiar with. I had that experience last semester and it was pretty sketchy. And so I, my idea is based on that and it's basically a combination of bendable display and a string that can attach on the both sides. So what it can, um, so it has a function if you roll it because it's into a bendable screen. If you roll it, uh, you can use as a lock uh, if you attach the string. So, and since it's a, devi a screening device, you can only um, unlock it with your fingerprint or like the custom customized pass password. And then um, uh, another thing is like it, um, you can use it as a headlight, so it can brighten your um, your way when you're like biking around. And then if you unroll it, and it will, it has a GPS function. So if you get lost, you don't have to worry about it. You can just find still find a way, and yeah, go to your destination. Okay. <laughs> questions. I got a question. What does this look like? Uh, honestly, I draw it, but my drawing is really bad. If you want to see. So I just, I'm, I, I, you're very descriptive. I, I think it would have helped to have like a visual. And I'm just trying to, in my mind, I'm trying to piece it together to see, because you, you went to different parts. Uh, and it just, it was hard to see what it would look like. Can you throw it up and let everybody else see? It's like, if you put GPS. So that's the GPS. Yeah, and the GPS. And this is like the locker. Yeah. If you have a locker. Yeah. 
these uh, these at least help me tie things a lot more together. So when you do your presentation, even the little sketches lets me know like, oh, like I get it. It goes on the lot. It's mm -hmm. very helpful to have. Okay, thank you. Good job. Next up. Send my actual message to him. It's pending on LinkedIn. Okay. All right. What do you need? Anything? Doc Cam? Yes, Doc Cam. Mm -hmm. It is Doc Cam. Yeah. All right. Next up. All right. So I changed my idea from the app. Um, I actually came across up, a man guys. that um, is a guest at the hotel that I work at, who I'm going to kind of try to help a little bit. Um, he is trying to, he actually has a patent for this. This is what he's calling a portable kitchen rickshaw. The name is being changed. Um, but what it is, is it's a bicycle that is pulling your food steamer. So it kind of looks like a pedicab. If I had his 3D model, I would have brought it for you guys. It looked really awesome. But this is my rendition of it. Um, it's got steamers here. This is his actual business. He does catering. But what he wants to do um, is use these instead of food trucks. He tried to purchase a food truck, realized that it costs way too much. And actually, if you look into it, sometimes like in, I'm not sure about California, but I know for a fact New York, um, people wait years to get their permits for food trucks. So this rickshaw will actually be a third of the cost of a food truck, and you can actually go to places that ordinarily a food truck would not be able to. So you could imagine some of these like cruising around in the gas lamp, you stop. It doesn't have to be Chinese food like this man's, um, but you just get a little bite before you hop into a club and less hangover worries in the morning. Um, you could honestly take these wherever. I could imagine if you wanted to get like a small catering um, business going that you could use these possibly like somebody wants outdoor catering uh, this could be your go-to the uh, cost isn't very much at all and you could just imagine if people really love your food how much money you could be making any questions question Dick. Uh, so can can this become a franchise that's his idea he oh, wants okay. to franchise this out he wants to take it to Kickstarter but he doesn't want to lose all his money because he thinks it's a great idea and I agree with him um, just trying to find the right avenues for it. Yeah. The idea is great, like both concepts like exist. Do you think it would be able to fasten it and secure it? Because you have bikes and you have like the little food trucks and he has he's got a patent for it already. He actually told me he, he patented it already. So I was just like, ooh, he just doesn't know what to do moving forward. He's a um, a veteran and he has a patent stuff to just sell the patent to somebody that can produce and make a ton of money. Well he's a chef too, so this this is what he wants to do. He wants to any other quick comments? Or any suggestions? Any suggestions? Of networking for this man. <laughs> I think you should. I, I, I've seen a, a Shark Tank episode where uh, someone was doing like something like this for ice cream, and he was mm -hmm. doing a franchise as well. And so the, there was kind of a branding behind the ice creams. And I was think, it the one where they made the ice cream right there for you? I think I'm not sure. That. I don't think it was that one because I saw that. I one, saw one, that one on Facebook that. yesterday. But, but the insights of the of the of the sharks were really interesting. So, so maybe. Yeah, he wants to go to Shark Tank, but definitely give him something to get up there with. <laughs> Very nice job. Thank you. Thank you for you. <laughs> what do you need? With the uh, nothing. All right, listen up, guys. Okay, so I stayed with my idea from last time, um, but I just fixed it up a little bit. Um, so, quick question How many of you guys are rushing in the morning and you don't have enough time to eat breakfast? How many of you would like to eat breakfast? Okay, and not just stay on coffee like all day. <laughs> um, so this, I, instead of like offering services of like I'm going to build a drive-through to breakfast cafes and um, different local places to eat, I thought about making just like services where you could create a website and an app um, where any cafe or bre breakfast place could go and like register on this website and then people could go and download the app on their phone or do it in the morning, take a minute to order their food and then you just go to the cafe you and then there'll be employees waiting for your order and just waiting on the sidewalk to hand it to you. And you just show your little receipt on your phone and then you're ready to go. 
and it'll take maybe like a minute out of your time instead of maybe like 15, 20 minutes uh, to prepare breakfast. So that's it. Good idea. Common suggestion. Very good thing. Next up. Yeah. Do you have to do something? Are we kind of finding our own kind of group, right? Uh, yeah, you're supposed to have your founder group. We had, uh, I know a number of people stayed late last time to try and get this all together. Well, maybe we can talk to the All right, so you need to do a new I think so. I'm plugged it into the. Okay, so under where your knee is. Just change it from dock cam to Mac. Yeah. Doc or I'm sorry, to LG T that one on the far right. I hope that's the laptop. Uh, I'm looking at it's a Mac PC and then the thing to the right. Okay. Uh, Listen up guys. Next up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. Sorry. Uh, I can see. Oh, shit. Sorry. That thing always pulls me. So it only goes so far. You may have to put it. Uh, I'm going to show you. All right, guys, listen up. Cool. So, my idea basically is to create a. Uh, like an ethical, sustainable, and socially conscious subscription coffee-based company, um, kind of like the Whole Foods of coffee subscription companies, um, or my clients or customers will hopefully be focused on trying to alleviate poverty in developing countries. Um, and then what we're going to do is partner with like local farmers and people in developing countries, and then directly connect them to the consumer and try to ship them premium coffee within three days of it being roasted. Um, the problem, coffee farmers, 90% uh, of the coffee produced is in developing countries, and most farmers, the average is that they have to sell it per pound for a dollar or a dollar fifty. When in the U.S., you know, it's selling for anywhere between ten and twenty dollars a pound. So my goal is to create like a revenue sharing model where then we give some of the profits back to the farmers so that they can focus on other things like quality and developing their infrastructure. Um, the opportunity, coffee is still a growing market. Um, so my goal is to create a long-term supply chain um, that helps improve the livelihoods of these farmers. And then basically what we're going to do is just create a platform um, where people are going to go to the website, sign up, it be pretty simple and personalized, um, where they're going to either select the type of coffee, answer a couple questions that they, um, you know, to get the bean that they're accustomed to drinking, and then we're going to send samples to kind of get a better feel of what they like. And then after that, we're just going to keep shipping it out, and then they'll have the option basically to keep getting the coffee that they like or just try new stuff um, on a month to month basis. That's it. That's it and fast. Great idea. Okay. So how is this different than Starbucks and what they try to do and like give back to the communities? Uh, Starbucks, they only they're like just starting to get some of their coffee to be fair trade, but fair trade doesn't really mean anything. Uh, it's just basically giving them some profit. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not really helping alleviate poverty. So I'm gonna try to just stay very regional um, and then partner with like a, like 10 roasters at a time, mm -hmm. help them make enough money where they're sustainable on their own and then move on slowly. Pretty good. Very nice idea. Cool. Right. Nice presentation. Is this well. concept just kind of like um, Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, just like Matt shoes, but yeah, similar idea, yeah. Which you see a lot of stuff gets great traction. I mean, when you can work to give back and stuff, but people love that stuff. Yeah. Nice job. Cool. Thank you. Next up. How many more do we have? All right, let's go. Keep, keep, keep the blood moving. What do you need for your presentation? Yes. Yeah, sure. Computer. You need to print the slides. I'm sorry. Do you need the print of the slides? Yeah, I do. Uh, what was his idea? 
But he's gonna do what he wanted for us while we do the PID. Can you just clarify five macros on a team? Yeah, six and six. Five or six. Thank you. Do you want to join us? I do. So, do you want to join us? Yeah. Uh, how many do we have? One, two. No more questions. Three, four, five, six, six. I didn't think I would take this long. Short but sweet. Well time. There we go. Please, Mona, so help I'm, us along. Okay, so I'm presenting you short but sweet. Um, it's the same idea from last time. So basically, it's a clothing store, uh, typically for petites. And these are some of my friends' sketches, the two of them. They are designers. So our store will have um, collection from evening gowns, casual, business casual, jewelries, shoes, and some other stuff. <laughs> okay, so we have typical uh, some services. So we will have a reward card. So every time you make a purchase, you earn some points. And uh, at some point, you will have a, a hand on the new collection. And we have a free fashion consultation. So we have a specialist who will guide you to choose um, what fabric and what cut will be better on your body shape, and we'll have uh, multiple location and online shopping as well. Uh, our target market will be all pretty women from different age and styles. We will also be targeting Asian women as they have uh, small bodies, and um, we all want to look fabulous. So we'll go by this goal uh, every day as the fashion show, and the award is our fashion right day, uh, runway. And that's it. There you go. <laughs> Any questions as the next person is coming up to present? Very nice presentation. Thank you. Thank you. What do you need him? Yeah. So guys, all right. So mine is basically the same as guys. All right. Please, please. Thank you. That's what pleased me. So I asked two nice first a few times. Mine is basically the same as last week. Um, uh, a couple months ago, I went to my friend's house uh, for a party. There was alcohol. And um, obviously, some one of my friends had too much. And so he went to the bathroom to extract some of that alcohol and, uh, and then pass out later. Uh, I went into the bathroom following him, and it turned out that he had not lifted up the cover of the toilet seat prior to regurgitation. So basically there was a lot of you know, bodily fluids everywhere. And so my idea it was basically, I didn't want to touch that. I didn't want to go anywhere near that, obviously. And so my idea was basically, uh, to, what if I could have a pedal that could literally lift up uh, toilet seats up and down and not have to deal with the problem of touching dirty toilet seats. So yeah. This is pretty. There you go. Fabulous oh, idea. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So my product is a touchscreen device that you apply to your refrigerator, and basically you scan the items you got from the grocery store, and depending on the average length to finish your product. It will then notify the grocery store and restock your product in a grocery bag that you can either pick up or have delivered to your house. And if you need it immediately, you can have a, an additional service charge so it will come faster. It's basically if you're really busy or just really lazy. Cool. Friendly <laughs> fridge. Right. Next up. Uh, so growing up, I've always been interested in art. First, it was like singing, then dance, fashion, writing, whatever. Um, but I lived in a really boring town, so it was hard to connect with other creative people. Um, besides, when I joined a dance team, but that wasn't until high school. So I want to create a social platform that's kind of like LinkedIn, but tailored to creative people, and you can upload your videos, your portfolios, and whatnot. And yeah. that's it. Okay. Questions, comments? Have you ever, have you seen what Adobe Cloud does? 
No, I haven't. Of, but they kind of do that kind you of do? stuff. You do? Yeah, so it's uh, like you can upload all your stuff, but you can also network with other people who create profiles. Can it be like singers and dancers and all that, or is it just more of like no, visual? just more like visualists okay, and yeah. uh, editing. Yes. And okay, is so it'd be like that, but like more for like. Yeah. Thank you. Can I keep it? Oh, okay. sure. <laughs> yeah, okay, will you give it to me eventually? Yes, I will. All right, thank you. I didn't know. All right, listen up. Next up. So, as we know, group projects can be annoying, and setting up meeting dates <laughs> with your members can be even more of a hassle. So, students have busy schedules. We all have either jobs or we're involved in other extracurricular activities or student organizations or even have families to attend to. Some of us live on campus, some of us live off campus, so all these factors make it difficult for all of us to meet. So Blackboard Hangout, which is similar to Google Hangout, it's going to be an instant messaging and video chat platform where you can create and edit Word documents and slides with all your group members while simultaneously like chatting. So you can do this like all at, at one time at the comfort of your own home, a Starbucks, a library, wherever you choose. So it's going to create the flexibility and the relaxed environment will help flourish creativity. Ooh. <laughs> so I'll tell you what I like, like best about it is that you build off and you're extending the functionality of Blackboard, which it does you already have like market penetration, it's already in the classroom. And if you could tie that kind of stuff in to the grading system and then use it built into it, you can simplify grading too. Yeah, I don't know why they haven't come up with them. Yeah, I don't know, but I like that idea. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hello, my name is Norman, and I'm a gamer. Specifically, Hi, Norman. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, um, <laughs> sorry, I couldn't resist. Uh, uh, so basically, I have um, a problem with all these tools for this game called League of Legends. And basically, I would have to go to specific sites. And it would be a hassle because I have that alt tab in, um, in and out from the game. So basically, I made this app called LOL Hook. But if you know the game, you probably know what that means. But uh, basically, it's an app that has all the tools into one platform. So it has like a chat service, a discovery, where you can like find players from your region near and far. Uh, we'd also have. Um, which, like it would have like updates because this game is always constantly evolving, so you will always want to be on top of that news. And one specific thing about it is that it allows you to pick specific tools that you want into that platform. So you can have like guides, counter picks, stuff like that. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's pretty much. Question. Yeah, uh, one of my best friends uh, got uh, sponsored for that game, mm -hmm. and they offered him like a really good gig, but he didn't do it. But my point was that he. <laughs> Really, um, like he, he connects with those people with the people that he plays with because you know it's really important to yeah. him. So maybe that definitely would have a, an issue. In that. Yeah, yeah, and, and the game is actually makes a lot of money. Yeah, like they're gonna offer him a place to live in San Francisco and bonuses on tournaments. Like he's gonna live a lavish life. He just didn't want to be that guy who plays video games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Any other questions? Comments? Excellent idea. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next up. How many more do we have? Raise your hand and you go. We're down to you. Me too. Boxes with some papers. We're on time out. Can you move from there to there? Can you move from there to there? All right, let's look. Let's stretch. We got three. It's number three. There you go. Go ahead, up. So tomorrow is the NFL draft, and millions of people are going to make a major mistake. They're going to go out and they're going to buy a jersey of their favorite player that was drafted. Odds are that player is not going to pan out. They're going to be stuck with the jersey, and the retailer is going to be stuck with extra stock of the jersey. So my idea is to create a service that allows people to essentially rent the jerseys and then return them create like a service where they pay like a monthly fee and that they can pick out any jersey of any player they want and they can return those jerseys and essentially save both the fan and the retailer from having all the extra back stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right now 
Rock, scissors, paper, best of three, and the loser has to wait. Come on, let's go. So one, two, three, and shoot. One, two, three, shoot. Ready, you lost. <laughs> Ready, go. Go. Uh, okay, wait. Yeah, let's start from the beginning. No. You won. You won. Yeah. You're up. Okay. There you go. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, this is similar to yours. It's an app that will scan the barcodes of the products and we'll tell you about the expiration date and everything. But you can also have a group mode if there's many people, well not many, but four or five people in the house, it can create a common shopping list and it will be easier. And that's all. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Last but of course not least. I have a presentation. Okay, so let's get you into this computer. Let's get you into the, there you go. Uh oh. We just did you like locked up now. It took like 15 minutes to get in. Like, So what are you guys doing after this? We're <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to jack drive coming away the hard one. Yeah, it's uh, cigars and tequila night. Uh, and me and my clients are already down there smoking cigars and drinking tequila. So, <laughs> so I gotta go. So I gotta get some meat before I show up. Oh, so we're not going there anymore. I have some gifts for you. I Click on the window behind it, might hide it. There you go. Okay. And you're on. So, this is a uh, bike rental shop service. Um, here in San Diego, we have plenty, but in Mexico, we don't, we don't have any. And it's because of the infrastructure, it's not there. And I think that the target market uh, values, um, there is potential for, for this idea. And um, I'm gonna apply design thinking by, by, um, by integrating a new urbanist movement, uh, which, um, which is um, creating coalitions with, with architects, city planners, and um, interested citizens that like that that would want bike friendly areas uh, in in the places, the communities that I will um, establish my shop. All right. Are, you here? Are there any questions? Is there any comments? Thank you for your good idea. Thank you for your patience. I appreciate your good ideas and your efforts. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You, you were going to cut it out. If you didn't have such a good day. I'm like, 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 I'm like,